Hello, Internet folks. How are you all doing? Welcome to episode number 145 of Heavy Metallurgy. I'm your co-host, Marty, and joining me as always, the uh, amazing, super smart, and handsome Alan Colson. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing okay, Marty. How are you doing? Pretty well, pretty well. Glad the week's done. I should have worked today, but I kind of got easily distracted so <laughs> that didn't happen you know one thing that has easily distracted me i've been telling the guys in the chat about this uh i've never been a guy that cleans records never have i had like this the brush that you sit on the record when it's spinning and da da, mm -hmm. it's done well i bought myself some some rags and some spray and little label care cover and i've been cleaning records and man i've seen the light it's it's i've had some really shitty sounding records that cleaned up real nice and they sound pristine it's amazing turns out those uh, weren't limited edition gray vinyl uh, copies you had after all yeah right <laughs> but yeah so this week before we bring in our guests we got one guest that's going to be late today he ended up having some work uh, obligations he couldn't get out of so our buddy eric will be joining us a little bit later but um one thing we wanted to put out there tonight, um, some of you might be subscribed to our friend Melanie Loves Death Metal. She also does reviews for us here on Heavy Metallurgy. She's on the streams, the Friday stream sometimes too. Well, you know, she lost her job last week, which really sucks and mm -hmm. freaking out a little bit. And she ended up selling her entire record collection to help finance her family until until another job is obtained so i mean but we thought it would be cool she's one of our own so she's a great youtuber and she also helps out the channel a lot we figured it would be really cool this is not an obligation but if anybody were to super chat today this evening all super chat proceeds will go to melanie and her family to help out until a new job is uh it's a it's a complete drag she had to get rid of her her music collection um, yep. she that took really it very sick. well. I mean, she, you know, very practical about it. Like, you know, this is way more important than, uh, you know, my family is more important than oh, the, yeah. the records, which obviously, yeah, absolutely. But anyway, we thought we put it out to the community. If anybody were to super chat tonight, all the proceeds are going to Melanie and her family. So, yeah, you know, some folks I know were planning on helping her out when she was starting to piecemeal her collection out through Instagram and stuff. But then the collection got kind of, you know, sold in one big swoop. So um, if you're wanting to, you know, looking for a way to help her out just a little bit, um, feel free, leave a super chat. Like Marty said, everything that gets super chatted goes to Melanie tonight. So uh, she's already on the job trail, filling out applications and interviews. We've all been there. It's not fun. It's stressful. But yeah, she's already hacking away at it. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Ryan, appreciate that quite a bit. So yeah, but again, and if folks you know don't feel like that or not in a place where they can do that, it's quite okay. We understand. Just uh, try and do a little something to help. Thanks, Atari. Appreciate, totally appreciate you. that quite a bit. So uh, yeah, if uh, folks can chip in a little bit, bad uh, won't hurt a bit. Uh, maybe just help also cheer her up. It's obviously a tough thing for anybody to have to deal with, especially when you've got you know family to support and got to worry about all those kind of responsibilities as well. But. Um, yeah, we may remind folks about it from time to time as more folks join in later. But uh, let's, uh, we, we've got a guest waiting. Let's uh, we we do. do something about that. I say make him wait. The future man, he already knew this was going to happen. Yeah, he's flipping me off on the screen right now. <laughs> he's hey, getting testy down there. <laughs> let's bring him on. Simon from Explosive Action. Welcome oh, back, hi. sir. Well, oh, hi. hi Simon. Thank you for having me. Hmm. How have you been? Oh, I've been all right. Um, getting getting back into the swing of things after the uh, unexpected brief hospital stay, which was uh, unwarranted, unexciting, but uh, yeah, getting getting back into my uh, my list of things. Wow, just looking at these. Thanks, Rockies. Again. Thanks, Tip Fam. You guys are too kind. Mm -hmm. So much amazing Thank support already. Much. Absolutely. Well, cool. Um, um, yeah, doing all right. Good. Excellent. You've been, even though you had a little bit of time in the. Uh, in the hospital you have been uh busy anyway the channel still rolls on which is very good indeed yeah um i had uh i think the metal the metal tag response was queued up ready to go um and then i land, landed myself in uh, 
the brief stay and uh once again thanks marty to uh for for whipping me up the thumbnail uh while i was bedridden because it was the only thing i hadn't prepared was the thumbnail so, um, but the amazing uh, youtube app let me uh upload uh, set the whole thing live when i had a thumbnail so that was good anyway that's good <laughs> Yeah, the um, that was going to be a lot more fun. There was a crocodile done. He had at one point. There was a couple other was. things, and uh, yeah, yeah, you know. But I, I figured that wouldn't fly, <laughs> so I kept it. I kept it simple. <laughs> Still I had some fun with it. Though. They were on yeah. brand, so yeah, that was yeah. all good. Um, but yeah, I've just been um, yeah, um, getting videos up. I've got got plans for many and uh, time for none. Uh, but you know, that's a common theme. Hopefully, I'll get some more done. I do have to say I'm, I'm a little flabbergasted that living in Australia, of all the things you could have fallen prey to that, you know, bite, sting, or swallow human beings alive, <laughs> it was a vestigial organ that got you. Yeah, it was my, like, own, my own body got me, yeah. It is, it's like one of those obituaries you see where, you know, you know, man dies by falling off of cow, and you're just like, but how? Of all the things that could but have how? went wrong, I know, right? that, really? It's just, and yeah. It's, and it's um it's still not over uh, the the you know the the pre work was done to settle the problems but I've still got to whip the thing out so I'm gonna hopefully film that for a video and do like a gore grind episode you know here's the appendix <laughs> there you go yeah just you know I'm sure there's a couple of labels you could sell that you know too for cover art absolutely <laughs> thank you Sunday morning sessions for the sixty six sixty six thanks Lee at Heavy Art Talk <laughs> thanks Nick Onik. Thanks, Tip Fam. Thanks, North of the Rockies. You guys are all amazing. Thank you so much. Yes, really thank appreciate you. you. I'm trying to thank everybody in the chat, and y'all are uh, chipping in for Melanie faster than I can type. Thank you. I'm going so, to uh, try as the night goes on to keep track of this, Alan. If maybe you could as well. You're typically <clears throat> a little more. Uh... Yes, uh, more, I'm already on top of it. Okay, cool. Yep. Awesome. All right. Um, and also, our, our other guest for the evening, Eric, is had some work obligations pop up he's supposedly going to be joining us later but this topic was his idea he had the idea of you know have you heard the term that it's on like all the message boards fuck off nowadays black metal well he figured it would be fun to do a fuck yeah nowadays black metal topic so mm -hmm. which and he set the parameters for this show the rules no bands thank you mike no bands um earlier than the year 2000 not even a demo, not no legacy bands, nothing. So no demos, no, um, no cheating. I've, although I already know that Simon has been cheating. So whatever, you know, that's how they roll down there. <laughs> I'm in the Rebel future, remember, so, you know, I'm like a year ahead. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Right. But yes. And um, again, Mike, thank you so much for the contribution and yeah and uh we, so we might as well get going and yeah. i had a hard time a harder time picking than i thought i would a lot of things i'm like oh yeah cool nope there were demos in the 90s there was other other things here and there that uh didn't qualify for the test so yeah i do think it was you know it's, it was a a fun topic um thanks Tyler. because with all heavy metal genres we're prone to focusing on the old classics you know all the glory albums from the 80s and early 90s and you know even the 70s in some cases and there's certainly nothing wrong with that i mean there we talk about them a lot for reasons we love them they're legendary but sometimes that can overshadow newer bands you know it, it reminds me a little bit like you know the issues you have with professional wrestling for example where everybody loves the Ric Flairs and the Hulk Hogan's and the Macho Man's and they just keep coming back and coming back. But it sometimes makes it a little hard for the new guys to get into the conversation. It's like, Hey, what about the rest of us? That's, you know, uh, aren't old enough for social security and would maybe like a title shot here, get, get out in front of a bigger audience. So yeah, these, you know, the idea of looking at, you know, these newer bands, they are the future direction that, black metal is going to go you know sooner or later some of these legacy bands retire a lot of them also just sort of eventually settle in i mean and if we stop and think about it and we're honest it's been a while since some of these legacy bands have made a very widely well-received album that you know pushed boundaries or really was you know top of the genre we, but we just get used to thinking like oh yeah new dark throne album 
because it's Dark Throne, not because Dark Throne's albums have been particularly great in recent years. If people have liked the new ones, that's fine. But when people talk about a band like Dark Throne, again, it's the old albums they want to talk about. It's not, you know, the newer stuff most of the time. So, yeah, the idea of focusing on the you know more recent bands, you know, what black metal has done in the 21st century without relying on those you know major scandinavian crutches from the 1990s or the big bands from the 80s i thought it was a really neat idea on eric's part so mm-hmm. i'm glad he brought that up to us and uh that we get to take a crack at it and really the way the, the you, you mentioned the fact <clears throat> that you know the legacy bands and as far as the second wave of black metal has started the legacy bands are still plentiful and they haven't gotten out of the way yet they're still putting out stuff and i think it's still uh some of it's very commercial but you look at like dim you borger for instance but none of it's terrible it's still good so oh, so I, I don't know whoa what was that <laughs> um so it you know the, the the bigger bands haven't got out of the way for these littler guys to rise up out of the underground and uh take a place so it's it's gonna be interesting to see when the demuse and the dark thrones and the all these other bigger bands, uh, Tolkas and all the other ones kind of go away. You know, what happens? Who's next? Who's next? But Simon, what were you thought? What were your thoughts uh, curating this list for the night? Um, I guess when I was going through it, uh, I, I was really gravitating towards, um, I mean, I had the, I had like two decades to pick from. And when I'm looking at what I've pulled, I swear I've sort of stayed in the last sort of six years, seven, eight years, maybe it just seemed like, I know there's plenty of good stuff from like that 2000 to 2010 period and I've got a couple, but, uh, I was really thinking of really recent years when I was looking at this. And, um, I mean, if anyone that watches my channel, you know, I still think there's great stuff coming out. So I, that's the stuff that's top of mind for me. Um, it's either the legacy legacy bands from the nineties or it's what's been recent in my, my ears. So the, yeah, there was things like weakling that I thought about including, um, you know, which is like 2000 on the nose exactly um but yeah most of the stuff i was picking is is really quite recent so yeah i found that interesting when i was going through this yeah yeah i there, i was kind of drawn towards more recent things myself but i think there's a bias on my part where there's kind of a period in the 2010s where i just wasn't paying attention to the black metal <laughs> scene very much so it kind of made sense to when i looked at things like they were either, yeah, early 2000s or more recent. I did, and I mentioned this to you all backstage, uh, personally, I tried to work around some of the bands that had big albums last year, just because I talked about a lot of those albums quite a bit on, you know, best of the year shows and album reviews and such. And you know, I, I did, again, wanted to sort of try to work in some different bands, ones that maybe don't come up quite as often. But there's a few big ones, of course, that, you know, have to be part of the conversation, I think. But yeah, so if there, you know, there's some album, if folks are wondering, like, you know, why isn't Alan talking about the same albums he just put on his top 10 list of 2023? It was kind of intentional to try to dig around and, you know, bring some other bands and get them in the rotation here. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, we might as well get started. I don't know. I think um, Eric's going to be popping in around 1030 or so, and we'll just have him play catch up. But um, we'll start with you, sir. And uh, okey dokey, get us off the ground. The, uh, get prepped and pull the stuff up. All right, so yeah, need to get all the stuff off the ground. I've kind of focused on uh, we talked about this backstage on bands, so I'm not just showing an album for the most part, I'm showing like you know, here's the three things this band's done since 2015. But anyway, if we want to talk about new, uh, and it's already been in the chat, we have the new holder. Uh, today's it's officially the release day, so it seemed like an appropriate thing to show. And I know Ben's done the review for the channel. Um, really like that spot gloss, just picking it up on there on the camera. But anyway, and embossed, um, and it's embossed. Yeah, it is too. So if you don't know Holder, uh, one woman U.S. band uh, formed by, and this is going to be a theme: me pronouncing things badly today. So Marlies Beerwerziat. Who's from formerly from Belgium, now is in the States. Nailed it. Are you her dad? Just, just get used to it. I'm gonna get <laughs> nailing it like the whole day. Um, this band started 2018, did a demo, which is this one. And I'm not gonna try and say it. 
Oh, look, I'll give it a go. Uh, D. Opeping Van Middleworth's Duisness. <clears throat> I'm just going to give up. Uh, that's a compilation, 2018-2019 demos, uh, which is very savage, very raw sounding, uh, and has that medieval, like early Satyricon, probably like Satyricon demo stage almost. Um, and that made it very surprising when this one came out, uh, the 2021 debut album, uh, God Slattering, because it's not raw. It is incredibly clean and polished sounding. Um, you know, you, you might put that down to... Uh, the, it's on this one's on Iron Bonehead. Um, maybe just push them a bit further, or pushed her a bit further. Um, and there's more slower songs and a heavier tone uh, coming through on this particular album. Uh, there's an EP in 2022. I haven't actually heard it. Um, I was kind of put off. People were saying it wasn't very good. I should really pay attention, listen to it myself. But um, yeah, I have not listened to that called The Eternal Fanfare. Somebody, uh, I think, yeah, there you go. Um, Marty's showing it might be a bit more of a death metal leaning to it um that, that's what so, the vibe i got out of it they're, they're yeah. supposed to go on tour with uh exhumed during that session and that's right maybe that's right which is really strange a bit. yeah um so yeah i hadn't hadn't listened to that i really should give it a go though but anyway this is the new one uh versus in oath um expands on that first full length just i i reckon there's a lot more eternus in this like i could hear and yeah. so the night became mm. in the mix quite a lot. Um, particularly as the side B second track cast into the well of remembrance. It just opens like a track from And So the Night Became. So big thick sound to it. Um and also the the lead track, I can't remember what the name is, the one that did the video clip for. Um, she's leaning into almost a bit of a murka kind of thing going on there. Like it starts, it's slow, it's got the clean vocals, and I was wondering if she's gonna go full murka, but no, she's still doing proper black metal, not you know whatever Merck is doing um so that was interesting but she sticks to her range as well she's not doing all the high folky th things it was just a bit of a you know a bit of a, a bit of a different change i guess doing the clean vocals um it's got session drums on this which is really good uh charles corin from ascended dead and funebrum so he's a he he's a heavy hitter really like a real beast of a drummer on this thing so adds a lot of weight and uh, session bass Sam Osborne also from Funebrum. So, yeah, you got, got a whole bunch of Funebrum mix in here with Holder. It's really good. Um, I just love the heavier, bassier sound on this whole thing. It's not all upper range like tremolo. Yep. Um, big mammoth drum sound on it. There she is. So, yeah, really digging it. Um, I've been listening to the promo for a bit. So, I only got the LP yesterday because it actually dropped yesterday. Surprisingly, managed to get it in Australia on release day. Amazing. And uh, yeah, really, really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, it's a. Probably one of the more popular, well-known black metal bands of the current era. So there you go, Holder. Uh, what's the story? She's from Denmark or the Netherlands and Belgium. relocated Belgium. Belgium. Yep, mm. relocated to the Pacific Northwest. Yep. Yeah. Dark medieval black metal. There you go. And I really the the early stuff I liked, but I didn't think she was there yet. And it wasn't until the no. first debut album where I'm like, wow, it came together really Big nice. Change. Yeah, but it's a big mm -hmm. change, but it sounded more mature, you know. Mm, yep. was a good word. I'd agree. And uh, yeah, like the Satyricon reference you made, Simon, <clears throat> I've always thought, yeah, that she would definitely kind of drew from that sound. And as some folks yep. have pointed out, yeah, you know, she does have like, you know, a really strong traditional black metal, you know, vibe worked in there. You can definitely hear a lot of the Scandinavian influence, but she does it very well. Mm -hmm. And, mm. you know, it at least, it doesn't sound like a complete, you know, clone or copy of one of those bands but i get it if some folks feel like it's maybe a little too close to those influences that's fair enough but yeah good band i've I'm only played the new album a couple of times i just haven't had time to spend with it but on first impression yeah it seems quite good yeah that's good it's good all right alan <clears throat> okay i'm just going to start with the relatively obvious ones for part of the conversation um Marty didn't want to bring up bands on Bind Rune, so somebody's got to uh, <laughs> push that boat out into the water. Let's talk Panopticon. Uh, this has been you know, a huge band on the U.S. black metal scene throughout the 21st century, and of course has you know much wider appeal than that. You know, great following in Europe and such. Uh, I don't know if it had really dawned on people until you know the Rhyme of Memory came out last November that. You know, Austin is now 10 albums into his career with Panopticon. 
that it doesn't seem like that but when you stop and count it's like that's that's a 10 album discography so he's definitely you know well into that sort of you know veteran band status you know very few bands ever get that far along and there's been a lot of changes along the way a couple i pulled and kind of like simon i was also approaching this more as like bands than just individual albums panopticon has become pretty synonymous with you know nature environmentalism the americana folk sounds and stuff but it's worth remembering that you know earlier albums had some very different directions from that and some of those are among my favorites uh for example i've got uh, you know on the subject of mortality i think this was the second one i heard from panopticon and you know i was really blown away with you know how you know, sort of you know, deep and personal the lyrics are the music still being very good this is the cd reissue digi thing um but you know uh, not far from that in terms of the timeline you know he also did this album social disservices which is one of the most horrifying things i you know you can listen to in terms of subject matter just you know really you know dark place to have to go um you know i always find it a little bit amusing when you know so many people in black metal want to you know talk about you know oh this band because you know they wear the most corpse paint or they stand in the forest at night holding a torch or uh, i've got a weapon made in the year 1393 and it's just like you want evil? Let's uh, let's talk about you know kids being abused in you know the uh, social you know system. Y you can just be quiet about your cape and your vampire fangs now, because that ain't gonna hold a candle to this shit. Uh, but you know, once again, you know, while it's you know, extremely disturbing subject matter, the music is all handled very well. I mean, it's good musically. It's not just there for shock value. It's not that you only notice you know these you know very very troubling you know elements and kind of oh wait yeah there's some music in the background it all works together very good and then of course you've got you know kentucky for you know the kind of big breakthrough with the americana sound you have the more recent albums you've got the uh, two album sets where you know part of it is just more acoustic americana type stuff i always butcher the name of that album i'm just not even scars man landscape god those are the key words. <laughs> Scars of man on the once nameless wilderness. Those were most of the words. Yeah. Marty has all the words. <laughs> part one and part two. <laughs> yeah, I, I can never get the full title out correctly. Thank you, Marty. But you know, yeah, you know, so Austin has covered a lot of ground with Panopticon in his career. You know, some of these albums go in you know, very different directions. I haven't even mentioned the first couple of albums, which you know, are more focused on you know, uh, his you know, kind of you know, anarchist you know, leanings and stuff. Yep. So you know, there's a lot of ground to cover there with Panopticon. Uh, and the other thing that's impressive about it, you know, for a lot of people would say the majority of those albums are very good. People are going to have their favorites, maybe their favorite era. Maybe there's an album here or there that didn't quite click with somebody or that they never checked out. But it's very, very, very rare to come across someone who's like, oh, I only like these one or two Panopticon albums. I don't like the rest of it. No, for the most part, it's more like, yeah, you know, this, you know, the Kentucky phase was great. And then the Minnesota phase is great. And oh, yeah, the earlier stuff was really cool, too. So it really speaks, you know, to you know the diversity he's been able to put out. And also just to the fact that, yeah, it's a 10 album catalog with a lot of variety in it. Yet it's all very quality. Uh oh, we've lost him. The squirrels chewed through the line. Oh no! <laughs> well, all oh, right, well, we're just going to move on. There's a glitch in the system here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go next. Um, you got sorry, it, Alan. And I'm going to kick him out too. <laughs> Let me see if I can. See if he comes back through. Okay. Well, I tried to, I found a lot of things I was picking was U.S. And I know we're going to be doing a U.S. black metal um, episode down the road with some guests. So I tried to lay off on a little bit. And I'm not going to lie. I'm starting to dig and trying to find stuff for this. I'm like, oh, cool. And then started to realize there might be a sketch element to some of it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't, don't want to promote that shit. But 
this is a band that is for a stupid name, but man, as far as orthodox black metal goes, it is right up there exactly what I want to hear from black metal. And that is Poland's Evil Feast. We've got um uh, Great band. Uh, elegies of the Stellar Moon. I think that's what that that's says. the best one. Stellar Wind, sorry. Mm. Winter Moon Enchantment. Mysteries of the Nocturnal Forest. Uh, split with Marble Bog. Such a hilarious name. Marble Bog. Yeah. Uh, Lost Horizons of Wisdom. This is actually my favorite. Okay. And uh, Funeral Sorcery. I have a couple 10 inches as well that um, I picked up along the way. But you got Grim Spirit, I believe is the guy's name. And um, it's just very much orthodox black metal very atmospheric very excellent use of synth work drum machine for this is perfect it really is sometimes the drum machine works and when this whole bedroom black metal thing started out back in the day i was all for the drum machine you know the the crappier more lo-fi it just seemed like a um a good fit for underground black metal but um, as the years went on, it got to be kind of a shtick and it got a little old and whatnot. But Grim Spirit and Evil Feast does it really, really well. It's just a perfect mix of enchanting, mysterious riffs with a, a shroud of uh, synth layers over the top of it. It's just otherworldly, world-building, dismal, awesome black metal. And it, yep. you know, it's funny, too, because it doesn't sound Polish. I mean, Pol the Poland has kind of a pagan vibe to it you know some of that underground black metal stuff if you're looking at graveland and all the bands around all that stuff it's very pagan type of you know even early behemoth a little more on the underground grim side but um evil feast they sound like their own thing very much rooted in the second wave of black metal just very otherworldly that's all the best i can say great 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 if you've never heard evil feast i scoffed at the name i had a friend that had one of these cds i'm like evil feast what a stupid logo what a dumb name and then this this lost horizons of wisdom was the first one i bought and i this album rules i mean all these are great and i'm missing yeah, a couple so yeah i'm missing a couple splits here and there I'm, i don't have a full collection but um yeah evil feast check it out folks good stuff yeah pretty good band i forgot about them already nice pick did you want to finish up your what you were saying? I oh, no, I was just trying to say thank you to Wade for uh, the super chat uh, that he was doing on behalf of Melanie. For folks that may have joined a little bit late, all the uh, super chat donations tonight we're giving to Melanie over at Melanie Loves Death Metal since she lost her job last week, and uh, just trying to help make sure you know she's got some money to cover bills and stuff while uh, uh, she's already out searching for a new job. <clears throat> Indeed. All right. I don't know what you're saying here, Devin. You checked out Evil Feast because they had. Yeah, they had. What? <laughs> <laughs> Devin's, had got the same internet Devin's got the same internet provider I do tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it drops out mid-text. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the, the satanic buffet, the golden corral of black metal is Evil Feast. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Simon, you're back. Okay. Um so yeah the other guys have said that they may not show things from the end of year list because we've been there and done that well i'm here to say fuck you to that because you all <laughs> need to buy this damn album um <laughs> this is haxanu totem pass i've talked about it for the last two streams so this is my trilogy i'm talking about this album um it was my album of the year um this is a uh one of the many releases from alex Poole, who's known for chaos moon and about a hundred other things which um, we've also worked with in Unbind Room. Okay. We put up we yeah. put out the um we had reissued Langer into Echoes Beyond. And it's still available if anybody needs a copy. Anyway. Okay, LP. cool. Good to know. Um for my ears, this is his best um project, Haxano. Um before this one, and I don't think I've shown this well, I've shown it on my channel, but this is the twenty twenty album. Um a Snare of All Salvation, which is just as good. Um and this band, I mean, you can sort of hear equal parts umgua and equal parts like Spectral Wound. That's the kind of sound. Very melodic, generally hyper-fast until it's not, 
he sort of slows it down, does a big stompy thing, and then comes back in with the fast stuff. So always grabs me. It's incredibly hooky, very memorable. Um, it's very European sounding, uh, even though it's US based. Um, just addictive, raging, icy black metal riffs. Uh, lots of ear candy, but still that doesn't make any less visceral. And I will keep talking about this thing until everybody buys it. So just get used to that. Haxanu, cool. great band. Cool cover art, too. He's yeah, got really so many freaking projects. So many projects. Yep. Oh, yeah. Dozens. <laughs> All right. Did, uh, did, you, did you kill the mouse that chewed through your internet, your Ethernet cable? <laughs> I, I, I actually finally this week got the new computer ordered. So uh, Woohoo! Yeah, there, there is new hardware that will arrive Lord knows when, but uh, it's supposedly on its way. We'll see. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> All right, let's see. I'm going to do another just sort of, you know, big obvious one. Folks have already talked about it in the chat a little bit. Um, we need to mention Wolves in the Throne Room. Uh, this, of course, has been a, you know, pretty big force. I'd say they're one of the big success stories in black metal. Hey, Tom, thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Tom. Um, but, you know, Wolves did a lot to help, whether you like them or not. And, you know, some folks do, some folks don't. I think they have done a lot to really help raise the visibility of black metal in the U S you know, for fans that have been around a long time, like us, U S black metal bands had a hard time being taken seriously during the 1990s. Um, you know, I'm not saying the projects were bad. Some of them were criminally overweight or overlooked, but they really, just you know kind of you know hit a black glass ceiling where it, most of them do not get much attention it was kind of thought that you know black metal you had to be european to be taken seriously as a black metal band that definitely started to change as we got into the 2000s and you know wolves in the throne room is one of the acts i feel like you know really did help get u.s black metal onto a lot more people's radar as a very legitimate contender not just a second rate clumsy sounding wannabe dark throne uh knockoff or something mr lando thank you so much really appreciate that um you know wolves has been around for a long time now too i they're one of those bands that i don't typically rush out and buy their albums on the day of release but i always want to hear what they're going to do next and i feel like they've actually gotten stronger over time I like, you know, the earlier albums with like such as Two Hunters where they, you know, they kind of had a formula back then of like, you know, a short track list of relatively long songs. Maybe you'd have four to six songs and they're all in that 10 minute plus range. They've kind of moved away from that a bit over time. And I think that's, you know, been to their benefit. They mix it up a bit more now. But, you know, the last few albums they've done uh, since signing to Relapse, including this one, which... Uh, yeah, Primordial Arcanum. I feel like, you know, they've really released some of their best material here over the past two to three albums, you know, and there was kind of a turning point there with Wolves where folks were really wondering what they were going to do when they released the ambient album that James uh, was mentioning in the chat just a little bit ago. I also tend to forget about that ambient album. Um, and a lot of folks were kind of like, well, is that it? Are they going off in that direction? You know, they actually came roaring back, you know, with a vengeance, you know, in their full Cascadian black metal, you know, greatness. Yeah, and I guess that's, you know, just another point, you know, in a way they, you know, have really helped, you know, cement Cascadian black metal as its own thing within U.S. black metal. Sure, they were taking influences from things like Weakling, but weekland did one album that's you know they're like you know 16 copies of it made or something uh i think wolves was able to pick up that ball and run with it a bit more maybe than weekland ever was and you know they just you know whether again whether you're interested in their politics or their you know farming and all that kind of stuff is beside the point they always you know put out you know consistently very strong material on the albums i don't feel like they've ever phoned in an album or just done a cookie cutter album uh there's always a lot of care put together in each of their albums. And uh, yeah, as such, I, I understand why this band has done well and gotten a lot of attention. I you know they work at it quite a bit and I think they've earned it over time. So yeah, wolves in the throne room, uh, definitely one of the bands that I think we have to mention is a big deal for 21st century black metal. I, uh, 
I've always wondered this whole farming thing that they really built up. <clears throat> they they tour a lot. I mean, how much farming are they really getting done on the road all over the world? Eh, probably not a lot. Their crops either are really hardy or someone's taking care of them or they're all dead. One of the two, one of the three. Well, they may have it covered or something like that. You know, Must and be. again, you know, they're, you know, practical about it. You know, I know sometimes they get, you know, razzed or like, you know, well, how are you guys going to be like back to nature when you play electric guitars? Just like, <laughs> and they're kind of like, you know, bitch, please. You know, we're not saying that, you know, you have to, you know, go back and, you know, live in the stone age completely. There's a practical limitation to that. We get it. You, you're not dunking on us by pointing this out or something, you know, uh, be a bit realistic there. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. It's my turn. Let's see. Church. Yes. Uh, Thrice Woven uh, is overlooked. I agree. I think that one doesn't get as much uh, attention as it should. Great album. What's up, Jake? How's baby girl doing? Congratulations again, brother. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Let's go this route. Is this the best band ever? No, but there is a whole contingent, a subgenre within underground black metal, black metal called DSBM, depress, uh, depressive suicidal depressive black metal. Suicidal. And um, this is a band in that style that I always liked a bit. Germany's Cold World. Mm, absolutely. Hmm. I've only got the first three albums. I actually have this one on vinyl as well, but. Um, yeah, they start out a little more maybe black metal. The stars are dead now. Mm. Um, I can't read it because it's too small. Maybe that'll melancholy, help. melancholy, melancholy. Too, yeah, yeah. Like and then really uh, autumn, and yeah, kind of what you come to expect. Super mid pace to slow, almost doom like black metal. A lot of dissonance. Um, the melodies are very sad very mm. mournful harmonies in there and of course the um the vocals are just pain pained you know the screech the 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 crying sad lone uh, orc out in the forest <laughs> type of vocals and i kind of lost touch with this band come to find out he's put out a bunch of other stuff as well i, I need to swing around and revisit the, the 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 depressive suicidal black metal i i get it i dig it but I don't like going there. You know what I mean? I just, uh, mm. when I'm in the mood for this stuff, it hits perfectly, but it just, I got to be in the mood for it. And that <clears> mood <throat> is lately about as common as a, a power violence or a, a power electronic type of thing. But, um, yep. German band, I believe it's German. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but this is always, I thought a standout good production values. Some of this stuff, this dsbm is really lo-fi this has production value to it so if you're looking for something with a little bit more meat on the bone as far as that sonically it really i think a little bit better production values in this uh the genre really helps sell that mournful harmony that they're they're uh laying down but yeah dsbm i figured it needed some sort of a um it's kind of a thing so we figured it mm. have something I've got this CD. I used to have a CD in the distro by a band called Happy Days. I don't know. I could never. I could never put it on because the logo was dumb and the name was dumb. All I could think is Fonzarelli, Arthur Fonzarelli. Exactly. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Actually, since it's DSBM, it's probably more like Hey. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's all bad. All right, Simon. As in said. Yeah, that that melancholy album's <laughs> great. I haven't even got the third one. I, I've got the first two, but I didn't. I'm a bit like you. I yeah, kind of just good. stopped. Melancholy was so good. I just kind of just stopped, but I should get into them, um, get get more of their stuff. Um, so I spoke about Paxino, which is a chaos pool, a uh, chaos pool, a Alex pool project. Um, and if I talk about him, you got to kind of talk about this guy. I'm not even going to try. I've never tried that guy. And yeah, what, what what the fuck is this? That, that <laughs> what is that? I don't know. It's a P with That's a bonus. Guy. That, that's a 15% discount when you pick up your print order because it misfed through the uh, copier. <laughs> Pretty much. So um, anyway, this guy, Sparta something something, um, he's done... Putz? Does it say Putz in there? I, I, see, that's the thing. Like it, To me, I look at him and go, yeah, that's Sparta Putz. But that's wrong, and I would never speak about him. So anyway, he's done a billion things, half of them are with Alex Poole, but he's um, 
very, very productive. The Oracle says he's got 27 active bands, which is ridiculous. Some are less active. Um, I'll pull out some of them. So this is the one most people know him from, which is Beketh Nexum Um That's Bastard. technically not active. <laughs> yeah, well, it's going to happen at some point. So yeah, Beketh yeah. Nexum is probably one of the bigger ones. I think it's um, a letter for TH. So what's that going to make? It's Sfata Douths? Douths? I really I like need, the one with a, the snowy cover on it. The snowy cover oh, with the trees is my favorite. Uh, yeah, I think I've got that one on LP. I've got like four of these. <laughs> I've got so much of yeah. this guy's stuff. He's got his own tub with its own label. Where yeah. I just put all of his shit together because it's just insane. So this is probably the one most people know. I think the project's technically um, expired now. There was, I think, one more coming. But um, that one's really good. Um, but I uh, pulled a few more. So other bands that he's done, uh, I've never never seen one band of his that I don't like. He's got it. A lot of it is in that sort of you know just riffy, fast, melodic tinged black metal. There's a lot of there's a few deathy black metal bands. There's one war metal band. I think there's an actual death metal band in there as well. Um, I've got quite a lot of them. This is uh, which one's this? I think this is Grieve. Um, this is Grieve G R E V E uh, with Follow Afs Fable. Lift Vets Dim Radio, fuck yeah, from 2022. This is a your traditional, just massive tremolo riff first. That one, that one's really good. Um, we've got this one, Trolldom. Uh, it's one of two releases from this this band. Uh, Af Gudas At, uh, very emperorish. Easy to uh, spot a lot of that influence in the cover. I think has even the, the emperor looking guys there on the back. Um, that one's really good. I think that's technically over as well. This one is one of the brand new ones, Natford um, with The Abyss. Um, really, really good. This is a another huge riff fest, really clean production on this, super fast. Um, really digging that one. Uh, this one, the logo looks very similar to Grieve, but it's called Muvitium. Uh, under Vemodet's Token 2021. Fucking these bloody European names. Um, very raw edge on this one. Sounds a lot of buxom into this sound. So uh, this one's really good. And that's just a few. Like I said, I got heaps from this guy. Um, I've got two more entirely new projects from him in the post. There's one band called Secrets, which seems to be almost a bit of a super group. There's another one with Alex Paul. Uh, another one with a guy called uh, Lekpride Karen, who's a guy from Ringare, another good band. He just keeps churning them out, and I've yet to find one that I go, that shit. So he gets his own tub. So, yeah, all the stuff this guy puts out, which he's very 2010 onwards. Still don't know what that is. A thorn, apparently, but, yeah. It's a TH, TH sound. TH. Yeah. So there we go. Someone can post an audio clip on how I say that. That would save me a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> all right. Ellen. All right. <clears throat> Next up. A band that was a big thing for a few minutes and very much fell out of favor, but um, I still think, you know, in terms of the musical merit, they're worth mentioning. Noctmistium, Blake Judd's project. First demos come out in 2000, so uh, yep, uh, just squeezes in kind of here. Uh, look, I get it. Nobody's disagreeing that the guy ended up being a jerk and ripping off a lot of folks. And yes, for a lot of folks, it's hard being sympathetic when somebody's excuse is, you know, uh, heroin. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> that aside, he did some interesting music for a period there. You know, the early stuff with Knock Missed Him isn't my favorite. It's okay, but, you know, again, it feels a little bit, you know, it, it's again, it's one in that mold of U.S. bands that were trying a little too hard to sound European. But he found his own voice. It was around this period. Uh, this is the Eulogy 4 EP. And it felt like, you know, here, you know, he still had, you know, some of the same aesthetics, but, you know, was starting to drift away from just, you know, the, the, the really sort of, uh, you know, generic, stereotypical corpse paint and such. And was starting to get, you know, different elements worked into the music. And, you know, that was Blake's sort of, you know, quote unquote genius with black metal was figuring out how to work some other things into it so that it didn't just sound like a second rate European band. Uh, this EP was the first thing I heard by the band. And yeah, it really caught my ear. 
because I wasn't expecting anything like it at all. But it's like, it's different, but it's actually really good. Building from this point, you know, there were several good albums there in a row, kind of culminating with, you know, the Assassins and Addicts, you know, the, uh, you know, black metal ones, which had, you know, the very uh, sort of obvious Pink Floyd uh, little Easter egg there right in the title. Even, you know, with the song, you know, called, you know, one of these nights instead of one of these days, really working, you know, more, you know, progressive, slightly psychedelic elements into the music. Some people liked it. Some people didn't. If it wasn't to somebody's tastes, okay, I get it. It was pretty different, especially at that time. But I have personally found it, you know, quite interesting. You know, they're not stuff I'll listen to constantly, but when I'm in the mood for it, you know, I revisit them and they always hold up pretty well. After that point, you know, yes, you know, things kind of got out of control personally. The last album or two didn't really feel like they had the same kind of quality. Uh, I think Silencing Machine was the one that came after Assassins and Addicts. Silencing Machine, you kind of dig at the idea that, yeah, this was, this feels kind of phoned in. They, somebody, so, somebody needs a paycheck for reasons. But there's a really good string of albums before that and a couple of eps also there's um what's the other ep world fall you know is another ep and that was another thing like the, the eps weren't just throwaway tracks that were slammed together to make a quick buck both of those eps had you know some you know very good songs on it uh well done cover uh selections and such so for a little while there you know Nocturnistium really was you know uh, a pretty strong force in U.S. black metal. It's a shame how the project had to sort of wind down at that uh, later stage. But there's a good chunk of material there from especially the middle years that I think is still noteworthy. And once again, you know, we can make all the hot topic jokes we want to, and we probably should make at least a few because they're funny. But that did once again, like Wolves in the Run room. It made black metal visible to a little wider audience. Some people are going to say that's a bad thing. I generally think that if bands are, you know, getting a chance to have a wider audience, that's usually supposed to be a good thing because that allows the bands to make a living, continue recording, uh, you know, perpetuate doing the stuff that we enjoy them doing. So yeah, I'm not really going to hold it against Noctmistium that you know, they kind of you know caught a little bit of a pop culture uh, blip on the radar for just a while. So that's my two cents on Noctmistium. Uh, not a thing now, but they definitely were a name in black metal earlier this century. All right. Well, I picked something. I said no nepotism, but there's a little <laughs> nepotism. Um, and actually, Noah's in the chat now. So, hey, Noah, what's up? I'm going to lick your <laughs> ass right now. But, um, yeah, they're Northern Michigan, for those who aren't aware, is, you know, we have, we've have we got some pretty diehard metalheads up here, but there's few of us. It's, that's changing over the years as more people relocate to Northern Michigan. More and more metalheads are showing up here. And um, But during the formative years, there wasn't, much of a heavy scene to be honest and it's kind of changing you know glorious dead my band and um noah in the in the chat he started a record label called northern spire productions and he has four projects uh Drotter, which is kind of more death metal slanted a new project that's going to be actually a live band called wood cult and these two bands uh lanzarath it's kind of like a collective of black metal musicians, essentially from around the area. Noah writes predominantly most of the music. There's five or six guys screaming on these records, but it's really raw, um, but well composed and well recorded black metal with pretty crazy vocals. And he also has a solo project wearing the shirt, uh, Oralisk. This one is called uh, The Underworld Obscura. It's just one man black metal, very well composed, very dark, abysmal sounding, a uh, little depressing, good riffs. That's just it. During the um, the pandemic, he really kind of hunkered down and focused on playing guitar and writing and learning how to record. And this material really shows. It's it's not just shitty sounding black metal. It's actually black metal with production values. He worked really hard to get here, and I think this Lanzarath stuff. It's got the most product. There's 
one more album I don't have on CD actually. I have it on tape. But um kind of started out as like a drunken side project. They all get kind of wasted and get together and write this stuff and you know fuck off or whatever. But as it's gone, it's gotten very serious. It's really well written stuff. And you know, it's I listen to this stuff not because I know the guy, because I like it. I know a lot of people that write make music that I don't listen to, you know, that are friends, but I listen to this shit. It's really good. And if you're into the raw black metal, definitely check out Northern Spire Productions. Um, it's a new label starting out, but he's putting out all of his own stuff. There may be, he may branch into other stuff down the road, but for Northern Michigan, um, it's, it's really good stuff. Check it out good it it could hang with any of the the classic underground black metal things that are sitting on your shelf for sure so northern spire productions sounds good check it out yeah they're on Bandcamp. all that good stuff cool all right all right well speaking of raw black metal um this is one of the most raw necro sounding things from modern era this is a band from salem called haunt um this is seriously necro sounding stuff. Uh, it's, give, it's got those blown out vocals from like Philosophum, where it's like sung through the headphones and mm -hmm. just sounds like static. Um, ripping just nasty riffs on this. The, if there's bass, you can't hear it. It's buried. Um, very true with a V sounding. This is what this is, true cult. Uh, just your under funeral moon kind of riffs, that kind of thing. Um, there's another recording and i know it's a like a, it's it's Oops. a gravestone but it, it does look like he's holding a giant concrete dick but <laughs> you know <laughs> you've I, don't seen know it, you dicks, I don't know how your dicks are shaped in australia but mine doesn't look well, like that I don't know. I mean, <laughs> if, if you're just, you know girth rather than length i suppose um grimoires of uh what is it grimoires of undead power this one's better um the first one's very very raw this is very raw so just one less very um there's a new album coming out called uh, Something Near, um, which I think is on CD and tape. I've listened to the stream, and uh, he's refined it a lot more. It, it, it's still the raw black metal, but he's dropped another very off, so now it's just raw black metal. Um, but it's really good stuff. I'm waiting for the LP on that one. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the mix on that one's better. This is really good. If you're in that mood for just, just na absolutely nasty stuff, this haunt from salem's good hilariously he's in a he was in a 20 a 2003 parody band called ass pounder and that made me laugh really hard <laughs> Just ass pounder. and it's a black metal band so there you go there he is maybe that's what he uses uh this thing for maybe you know yeah. maybe that's, that's the ass pounder yeah i don't know the haunt it's good stuff if you're in the mood for just strip back and like it's it sounds like you'd think he's playing it live but it's only a one-man band so Unless he's got eight eight uh, arms, he's not, not playing it live. So anyway, good stuff. All right. Alan. I'm going to take the high road and pass on all the ass pounder jokes. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I've got, I've got to introduce a little bit of class to the stream here. Uh, okay, up next. This is a band that seemed to get a lot of hype around their second album. You know, there was a period there where I saw their names everywhere. And then they kind of just you know, sort of didn't hear about them, but they were still doing some stuff. Uh, Polish band, Colts to Ghouls. Um, yeah, when their second album, you know, their albums always have like, you know, a one word title, then dot, 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 or something else. Um, so I get them a little mixed up since they're a bit similar. But yeah, when the second album came out, which one was that? That was Henbane. I believe. Yeah, Henbane or Sonic Compendium of the Black Arts. That one came out in 2013. And even though, again, I wasn't paying a ton of attention to Black Metal around there, somehow that album kept getting in front of my eyes. Um, yeah, I checked it out and bought it. It was always a weird album to me because there would be times I would play it and really get into it. And then I'd play it again a couple weeks later and be like, what the hell is this? Wait. Uh, I always had trouble settling on that particular album. Sometimes it really clicked and sometimes it just wouldn't. But yeah, you know, over time I did, you know, check out some of their other stuff, you know, um, and I tend like some of the other albums a bit more at this point. Uh, the debut Hexum has, you know, a really kind of nightmarish sound to it. It's got a little bit of that just like 
slow, sinister, deranged vibe of Beharit's drawing down the moon. And their most recent album is a little bit different in another way. And this one is uh, Sinister, the one I showed a second ago. This one, it feels like the band has definitely reined in some of that, you know, early sluggish, chaotic nature from the first albums a bit. You know, they, here the songs feel a bit more focused. They're adding a few things here and there, little touches that still make them very creepy. And I think that's, you know, one reason I come back to this band from time to time and play some of their stuff. They do a very good job at the creepy vibe. They're not playing especially fast. They're not trying to be especially lo-fi. Uh, they're not trying to go over the top with the sh shriekiest vocals or the deepest vocals. They're just developing you know, uh, a pacing and a vocal delivery that really can put you on edge in terms of that you know, lo-fi horror movie soundtrack sort of way. It's like you know, you're very slowly going into the cellar you know you shouldn't be going into the cellar. You're not going to find anything good in the cellar, but you're still slowly inexorably going down there, and yep, yep, shit's going to turn out bad. So, yeah, Colts to Ghouls, you know, they've done a lot of EPs and splits and stuff, so I, there was a period where everybody was hunting those and gobbling them up. Uh, some of them got kind of pricey for a while. So... I don't know what the deal was, if they were sort of flavor of the month for a bit and then everybody just lost track of them. Yeah, I don't know if folks, you know, just didn't like the, you know, third and fourth albums as much as the first two. Uh, not sure where they kind of, you know, uh, fell out of the limelight a little bit. But, you know, kind of a cool band that, you know, has their, you know, own little unique niche going for this, you know, slower, but, you know, very, very twisted, creepy, deranged uh, mentality in a way that's different from a lot of black metal bands. It's not, you know, DSBM or anything like that, but it, it de definitely gives you, you know, the, the creeps, uh, the way some of that stuff can. So that was my next pick, Colts to Ghouls. All right. Uh, Jake mentioned them in the chat, so I might as well pull them out here. I had them, I had them picked, actually. Um, Finland's Cosmic Church. Blow myself up here. Uh, Finland has got a very rich black metal scene. It has, it's definitely its own style. It doesn't sound like Swedish black metal. It doesn't sound like Norwegian black metal. It's got its own vibe and attack. There's a little bit of a punky aesthetic to it too, that makes the riffs very catchy. And there's also a very strong contingent of sketch in it as well, which kind of hard to weed it out, but, um, a lot of great bands from that area regardless of that and but cosmic church now now defunct this is the last album um i can't it's finished i don't know i can't say it i'm not even gonna try um it was a band that probably could have kept on going and people would have been psyched about it um really solid this is a split with blood red fog actually um kind of gone too soon and i was listening to them today because i realized it's been a while since i've spun cosmic church it's uh to describe it foundation finished black metal but where a lot of the other bands in the genre are a little more like i said they had the punky the punkiness to them this here is just a lot of melody there's there's the, the finished style with a lot of melodic uh, guitar lines on it um it's catchy, but it's also very emotional because of all the melody on it. Harsh screamed vocals. I mean, it's definitely in the Finnish wheelhouse, but they just had a little bit, um, I don't want to say uplifting because that's not right. Uh, just a little bit brighter tinge to it than a lot of the the dark and uh, uh, brooding Finnish stuff. Or, you know, Finland's also has a very cult. Uh, you know, you got the Bathory, the Bathory, the Beharit um mm. contingent too it's kind of like the uh, zazzle and all these other bands that are just super simplistic punk rock with a guy in corpse paint screaming kind of like stuff <laughs> this is a lot more formed than that but um yeah cosmic church kind of sad this band is gone everything i have by them is it's very enjoyable thanks john doe appreciate you man thank you so yeah, check out Cosmic Church. I don't know. This stuff might be expensive to get nowadays. It is on, a lot of it is on Spotify though. 
check it out. Simon. All right. Um, as is usual with me on these streams, I always have to represent the home country. So here we are. This is a band called Kervna, K-R-V-N-A. They are Australian band. Which and, you did a review um, for on Heavy Metallurgy last I year. I certainly did. Um, and I'm going to show that one here. They uh, It's a one-man band formed in 2021. This is the first album uh, called Semper Furnace. Um, and this is the one I reviewed for Heavy Metallurgy. Uh, for Thine is the Kingdom of the Flesh. Um, and I'm wearing the shirt for that one. So that's the same thing. Hey. Um, fantastic. Very, um, very Australian sounding, which may not make sense to a lot of people, but um, they play a uh, very similar sound to Pestilential Shadows, which is in, uh, not surprising seeing as Kirvner is now the guitarist for Pestilential Shadows. Um, and lots of similarity to older Australian bands like Astrial, uh, Order of Arias. Um, but if you want a bit of a more global similarity, I'd say Opus 4 era Abigail. Um, and that leads nicely onto the new EP, which came out this week. Um, this is uh, The Rhythms of Death Eternal. Um, from the promo, so you go to the band camp, great description, an aggressively grand form of mystic black metal built on rustic trancey repetition and evolving astral majesty. I think that's a great description. It sounds definitely what this kind of thing is. Um, it's fast, it's melodic, it's very spiteful, very angry vocals. Um, and to really sell that comparison, this has an absolutely amazing cover of Astral Images Dark and Reality uh, from Abigail. Um, not many bands attempt Abigail covers. Kirvner did, one man band, absolutely nails it, uh, worth the price of entry. So you can at least go listen to that cover on, on Bandcamp. But this EP is fantastic, all the stuff is fantastic. Um, this one's out on Z uh, what is it? Z Zazen Sounds, labeled out of Greece, but you can get it straight from his um, Bandcamp as well. And uh, there's a vinyl version coming of this, which will be the first uh, vinyl for the band. So it's all CDs and cassettes at the moment. I've got the CDs here. And, uh, yeah, also go check out yeah the review I did for Metallurgy of uh, the second full length, but uh, new EP. Good stuff, Australian black metal rules. Go check it out. All right. Alan. All righty. <clears throat> Let's do this one next. Uh, hit a few of the sort of your bigger, more well-known bands. Uh, this band did three albums and some EPs and stuff, uh, but they've already split up. They're not around anymore. It is uh, Ireland's All of Plagues. This is one I honestly don't remember how I stumbled into them. It may have been just the fact that the second album shown here had a really strange title. It's called Mammal. It's kind of like, that's an odd one. And it may have been the cool band name plus the odd album name may have been just enough to sucker me in back like uh, <clears throat> when I had like an e-music subscription. It's like, yeah, I got three bucks left this month. I got to spend on something. Let's, uh, let's check it out. And I actually ended up enjoying it quite a bit. You know, Altar of Plagues was very good at, you know, these you know, relatively long song lengths, not going nuts, but, you know, sort of longer songs that had, you know, a little bit of this, you know, droney, trancey kind of vibe. You know, they could get, you know, a really good, you know, riff or rhythm going and, you know, just kind of let it keep repeating in the background for a while on a lot of their tracks. So... The vocal delivery you know, was always, you know, you know, pretty harsh, you know, shrieks and screams worked well. But, you know, the songs also managed to be relatively memorable, you know, and that's something, you know, that's always for me a big selling point. You know, after I play it a few times and I set it aside, am I actually going to remember distinct tracks from the album or am I just going to remember it as that was kind of a cool big wad of atmosphere nothing wrong with a cool big wad of atmosphere from time to time sometimes i'm in the mood for that but those albums don't tend to draw me back over and over there's nothing that's you know hooking me um you know altar of plagues you know some of the songs you know on here like you know <clears throat> uh you know neptune is dead and feather and bone yeah you know i could remember very distinct parts of these songs, even if I didn't listen to this for months at a time. Uh, there's a really neat part on here with a vocal sample of like, you know, an Irish, I believe it's called Keening, where they would do like um, 
you know, a female uh, funeral dirge kind of song in short that they, you know, would sing, you know, uh, when somebody had passed away. And, but it sounds like it's, you know, been recorded or played through like, you know, uh, an early 20th century, you know, uh, sort of, you know, shellac recording or something, an old 78 RPM type of thing. So they always had, you know, some, you know, interesting things added into. Uh, really liked the White Tomb album. Really like the Mammal album. The Mammal song, I think, has the better songs. White Tomb is, yeah, good, but maybe not quite uh, as distinct. Things did kind of go a little pear-shaped on the third album, in my opinion. Uh, for starters, the title is very awkward. It's Teeth, Glory, and Injury. Never quite have figured that one out. Um, the cover image is kind of odd. It's like a... You know, a bow, a bad should have pulled it, but it's like a you know ballerina or dancer, you know, in a very kind of you know, awkward pose. And on that one, it feels like you know the songs just didn't quite come together. But uh, and then the band split up pretty soon after that. Interviews with the one of the main songwriters, you know, after the fact, he moved on into non-metal music completely, and you know, he was just like, well, you know, at the time there from you know two thousand five into the early 2010s that's very much where i was at as a songwriter you know, i was you know writing stuff that you know, was dark and well suited to black metal but i kind of just moved to other spaces in terms of songwriting he's like i just haven't felt you know that kind of creative urge so i got uh interested in writing other types of music and moved on to other projects so that was that but yeah i've always uh you know, thought Ultra Plague's, you know, one of those, you know, lesser known bands. You know, they come up from time to time, but I enjoy their stuff. I thought, you know, they had a decent little run there. So I <clears throat> figured I'd include them for uh, 21st Century Black Metal Night. All right. Well, I am the type of collector where I find a band that clicks with me. I want their entire catalog. I think maybe we're all that way. I don't know, but... I'm in the process now of hunting this one down. Um, they're a Greek band. Recently discovered them uh, called Lunar Spells. Their latest oh, one yeah. is Demise, Demise of Heaven. Mm. Right, Ben. Uh, this one here I've only listened to a couple times, but it crushes as well. This is uh, Where Silence Whispers. I've got an earlier EP coming and a split as well. But what to expect here? They're a Greek band. This album in particular, very fast very fast kind of in the style of marduk but with uh tuned a little higher up i think and the riffs uh, you read a, a read a description if you like satanic war master and Bub i don't really hear satanic war master on this other than the riffs are really good and uh catchy um yeah i've been really kind of enchanted by this stuff i've been listening to this record in particular quite a bit but um yeah greek band they don't really sound overly greek to me which is funny no not at all no, and um, it's just really good, unrelenting, um, fast second wave black metal. Could be Swedish influenced a bit. Um, obviously, the Marduk thing, the speed. Um, yeah, check these guys out. It's uh, this is on um, Northern Silence Productions, so I felt pretty safe thinking that they weren't sketch. But um, my next pick, <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> but uh, this one, this one, yeah, yeah, get lunar spells. It's good. It's so hard. Like we were talking in the chat, it's it has become exhaust. It, it's becoming exhausting to keep track of that shit. I just I can't. I can't. Most I'm glad you pulled that one. Garbage. Yeah, that's great. That lunar spell stuff is of the the newer school. It's it's great. Really good band. Solid. I so think they the, started and they're not that old. No, it's, it's pretty recent. Spells. Like 2019, uh, 2020. Twenty twenty. Their first EP came out. Twenty twenty. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I've got them on CD, but you've just shown the LPs, so you know, collect the scum. Now I want those. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. CD doesn't cut oh. it. Now that I've seen that, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think the, the LPs existed when I got the CDs. I think they're one of those. They got caught up in the here's the CD, and then like ten months later, the LP came out. Um. So all right. So this was we were talking backstage. This was my, you know, is it a bit of a cheat? Technically, this band formed in 1999, but the first thing came out in 2002. But then Marty goes and shows Evil Feast that was formed in 95, so I don't care anymore. 
they um, did they did the metal archives said that 2002 was their first demo the so first release and i don't give a shit formed. when how can you form when you're one guy it's like oh i gotta get my my, my hands together oh, I look in the mirror are you ready to rock today no nope. we wait till 2002 not okay. 1999 marty i, know, I yeah. agree it's okay that's why no, i'm Mar showing this one we marty can... now the, the the international convention on blackened metal ha ha nailed this down a few years ago and you know it very well shame on you for forgetting a project technically starts as soon as they design a logo that is not completely legible by eight out of ten people asked on a street that's when it counts if, yeah. if your logos, if you, if you got a logo, but it's, you know, still too legible, the project hasn't begun yet. Fact. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'm just saying, how can a project form when you're a one man band? You're fucking, you get you, uh, you, today when you, get, when you have that logo and it's indecipherable to eight out of 10, you've started. I come up with the, my the, name the, in 1995, the, the name evil feast. The clock starts <laughs> running as soon as that logo is ready. I didn't get off the couch and stop eating Cheetos until 2002 when I finally put the bong down and decided that it was time to start making infernal black metal from grandma's uh, woodshed. That sounds more like an evil <laughs> snack, not an evil feast. Well, yeah. Well, you know, you got to start with an evil, snack. evil munchies. Was it an evil bong? You put down the evil bong. Could be. Could was be. it Probably evil? <laughs> evil? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, I'll get on to my one here, but I can see Mike in the chat, so... Uh, go back and I, I did a whole bunch on this guy, Mike. So you might want to go and check that out because I don't know how to pronounce his name. I know I know you have a helper when you talk about his stuff, but anyway, that's back in there. But uh, yeah, I wanted to show this band. It's going to come across really badly, but this this is dark space. Um, and the slip covers are very. I will be putting up a review difficult. Monday that I, of the new album. Of the new one. Yeah. Excellent. So, Hopefully. yes, the Oracle <laughs> says the band formed in 99, but uh, they put out demo, which is called Minus One, I think, in 2002. So I'm taking this. The band's from Switzerland. Um, this is some of the coldest black metal that you're uh, ever going to hear. Um, not cold of winter. That's the sister project, Paysage de Verre. This is the cold isolation of deep space. Um, Three-piece band, but all of them are on guitar and bass. The drums are a drum machine so it's just this whirlwind of riffs but you can't really hear the riffs it's it's more of a the whole thing's just like a melody but in like chaos form it's more you of a vibe make, yeah. the vibe <laughs> yeah i mean it's not really distinct riffs uh unless they slow down when they slow down sometimes they even get to chuggy kind of riffs but when it's fast the guitars the bass it all just blurs um so you follow the sort of overall melody rather than the patterns and it's mostly blasting the whole time um vocals are shrieked and back in the mix very similar to paysage um a lot of dark sort of ambient pieces between the tracks um and they're all numbered this is four but it's like roman numerals three and then an i so the old old school roman numerals not even iv so four three two one and as marty said I don't think it's called five. The next one that's coming out is called um, two minus two or something. Something it's minus. Two. It's yeah, very um, industrial. It's very industrial. I was very surprised. That's yeah. interesting. It's less and, black and metal, more of a uh, industrial All transmission right. from space kind of thing. I will. I will see how that one sounds. Um, yeah, that comes out in a week, so I look forward to watching your review. Um, and uh, yeah, that's only like a forty-five minute track or something. I think I read. Um, anyway, yeah, dark space. Um, I love all the sort of the, the, not too much of them, but there's sort of sound samples in there from appropriate movies. Like there's like a sound sample from 20, 2010, the sequel to two thousand and one. Um, there's that, like the uh, the the what is it? There's the movie Sunshine, and there's like a, a ping sound that you always hear in that movie when they spot the spaceship. There's like a ping sound. They play, he plays that on the CD for some reason. It just adds like ambience to the whole thing. Um, there's even a quote from Prince of Darkness, which was an interesting pick, but it works well. So, yeah, check uh, Dark Space out. If you've only heard Paysage de Ver, this is the astral version of that. And I much prefer it over Paysage myself. It's good stuff. Paysage has some some awesome stuff and some eh, ambient, kind of boring ambient shit too. He's but... done too much as well. Yeah. Dark Space have done four albums and a fifth on the way and that's they space it out but paysage oops like sorry Alan. every there's an ep every 30 minutes yeah sunshine's right. great 
And every time I listen to this dark space stuff, it makes me want to go and watch sort of deep space themed movies. So it works. All right, Alan. All right. <clears throat> I'll switch over to the uh, Bandcamp feed here for a pick or two. Uh, Wade mentioned, asked about this one earlier, and uh, yeah, he, he knew I'd probably bring them up as a pretty safe bet. Um, none. Band from the Portland scene. None is, you know, one of, you know, there's been a lot of bands, I think, in recent years who have been, you know, aiming to sort of, you know, capture that classic Burzum vibe, uh, which is deceptively difficult. Um, lots of bands do it, and it often can come off sounding, you know, just pretty generic. None is one of the bands that, you know, really come close, you know, that they're getting, you know, the right vibes from, you know, kind of the classic early Burzum albums up through Philosophum. Uh, something that makes none kind of interesting is the overall atmosphere and mood feels like, you know, they're definitely working in more of that, you know, depressive suicidal kind of side of black metal. But again, musically, it doesn't feel like some of those bands, a lot of those bands, you know, going for the, you know, the really, you know, dark or disturbing kind of music. But again, none, you could put it on and feel like, you know, wow, that's a really good Burzum inspired act. But just when you know, with this, you know, kind of you know, sadder atmosphere to it, and it's not just that it's like you know, sad, it, it has a very lonely vibe to it, you know, that they really do capture this just sort of eh, you're, you're defeated and on your own, uh, kind of sense in the music, you know, just with you know, little things here and there, a little bit of you know, touch of piano there, for example. And they just, you know, they, they really do kind of pick very carefully at those emotional chords that can be, a, you know, re really bring you down, but they're doing it in almost a subtle way rather than just like, you know, I'm fucking sane and I've got a noose and all this, you know, we're all just going to die now. You know, this is killing you very slowly by inches instead. <clears throat> and it's very effective. Uh, this was, I believe, the third album, Damp Chill of Life. This is the one I've played the most, so I'm the most familiar with it. <coughs> Excuse me. They had a good album that came out last year that they went for a little bit even more of a minimalist sound in parts of it. It's a pretty good album, but it can be a little trying to listen to just because, you know, there's some longer passages where not a lot is happening. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, it's meant to you know, kind of, you know, help perpetuate that sense of isolation i get what they're aiming for on the newer album it can just be a little trying to get through some of those passages because it's it has the right emotional thing but they almost draw it out just a little too long to the point where you're like um we uh we, we, we about done being sad now is this that's going somewhere maybe maybe not um so yeah it didn't get quite as much attention as you know the previous stuff did but yeah still you know very well executed project uh i like their take on things need to spend more time with the earlier stuff still it's one of those things that's always on my to check out list and just never quite floats to the chop but uh yeah none you know they've gotten a little bit of uh, visibility in this style and well deserved i think i think they're putting this stuff together quite well all right uh, another band I've recently gotten into, and I'm going back to Australia because Simon just doesn't do a very good job of keeping track of stuff from Australia very well. So um, I figured I'd pick up the slack form a little bit. Um, Rune Spell, Shores of Nashville. Uh, very good. This album freaking rules. I was shocked at how good this thing is. I've listened to it about three times. I just got it the other day. I have an, an old, the one that came before it as well. I have not spun as much. This one here just really clicked with me. Scott, members that have been in a bunch of different bands. Um, Drowning the Lights, one of them. Um, uh, Pestilential Shadows, just tons. They're, the line is, the lineup is huge. And Temple Nightside, Slow Death. It's a, a ton, a ton. But yeah, what, what you're getting here is it's it's kind of traditional black metal wrapped in a atmospheric black metal um, carrying case, I would say. It's very emotive, um, expansive. The 
production is really good. It's really well done. I love the cover art on this thing. Fantastic cover art. Um, an iron bonehead. There's just a there's just a, a spacious uh, quality to this music. And again, I'm a big fan. I don't need really super flowery or avant garde. I do like that stuff, but I like a traditional style of black metal. And this is, and it's not like Drowning the Light. It's a little more sophisticated than that. If if you've heard. Uh, the Drowning the Light guy has got a, another black metal project called Eternum. It's kind of in that vein. Yeah. That that Eternum stuff is way better than Drowning the Light. And this Rune Spell stuff is way better than Drowning the Light. Although there's a couple good Drowning the Light records out of a thousand of them. But um, this is exceptional. I, I Like I said, I got this the other day and I've been listening to it whenever I get a chance to. It's really well done, um, well produced excellent australian black metal that feels european to me has a european vibe i don't know yeah, i don't, they, I don't they, quite they get the a, australian vibe yet you know i don't know you know runespell Rune draws real heavily on second wave scandinavian sound yep. uh yep he, he is very good at it for those people that are concerned about such things you don't have to sniff around runespell too much before you start getting the <laughs> sketch um just, just it, some folks care about that, some don't. Um, musically, very good. You, you don't have to scratch long before you're finding covers of absurd songs and references who? to the uh, what, what, Rune Spell. Oh shit, I didn't know that. And uh, <laughs> and you know, so, song lyrics based on like what is it, the eighteen words mantra from uh, you know, White Power movements and stuff. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's there. Demonetized. It's, 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 it's a shame because you know musically, yeah, uh, Nightwolf you know has some good stuff, but there's it's so exhausting yeah. to research. I just it is. I, I mean, mean the, before you pull, push the buy button, you listen to something online, you're like, this is fucking awesome. You go to buy it, and you're like, oh wait, wait, wait. You know, you have to you know get their twenty three and Me uh, DNA test and all this other crap. I don't know. I, I'm pointing it out for the people that take that who are concerned about that kind of thing. I'm not trying to cancel the band i'm not saying you shouldn't listen to them i'm saying the music is good but you will pick up some yeah uh, some ns vibes if you look at the band for more than a few seconds do with that what you will you know you, you have the information you can decide if that's something that doesn't bother you this is a great band and you know and what if it's Jake? something that you're very sensitive about you will be upset if you don't know that buy their stuff and then find out that yeah there are some kind of sketchy connections there and this so, drawing the light thing just Jake pointing it up. out you know that's i never would have known that i've heard that through the grapevine grapevine but i you know every all the shit's like vampire stuff so it's mm. like i don't know i just it oh. yep what are you gonna do it's tiring it is tiring. It, oh, it is. <laughs> yeah it, it's a tiring annoying and such and again i'm uh, <clears throat> I'm not telling people what to do with that information. Oh, either. I'm just putting it out there so that folks are aware of it. Because some folks are very, very uh, conscientious about that. That's their choice. There's a difference between, okay. I mean, there's a difference between politics and racism. There's two that they, they, they get blurred. The lines get blurred together a lot. And I mean, obviously, politics are different. And racism, ugh, it's such a fucking a fucked up shit, Matt. Anyway, Simon, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just waiting over here. It's okay. Uh, what have I got? Oh, yeah, okay. So this is a band. Um, I'm pretty sure I heard about this from uh, Ben, Brain Smasher. I think this might have been one of the first um, things I learned from his channel way back when. This is a, another Swiss band uh, called uh, Tardigrada. And uh, all the covers are very black and white. This mm. is top quality, top quality yeah. black metal band. Uh, Good stuff for fans. Yeah, for fans of kind of like Luna, Aurora, some of their albums, um, Vork Nuts, uh, Australian bands like Woods of Desolation and Austere. Um, I reckon a lot of that. Not as not as DS as some of that, but um, there's a lot of that feeling in in Tardigrada. Um, the this is the demo uh, here. This one's called uh, Word Stand from 2012, which is really good. Um, that's just had the LP release of that demo very recently. Um, this is the album I think I heard from Ben, uh, which is the Emotional 
Odinus. Well, there you go. It's emotional something from 2016. Uh, and then 2021, this one, which is uh, the uh, latest and my favorite one. Uh, this is Vom Brusch bis zur Freiheit. There you go. Um, Swiss German. Very clear but appropriate sounding production for this kind of thing. Every instrument's well mixed, uh, even as far back as that demo. It's just very good sounding, uh, including the pained and very shrieky vocals. Um, that's well mixed. It all sounds good. It's not too over the top either. It's just exactly what it should sound like. It's very lush. Uh, the more that it unfolds, uh, the, the music unfolds more as the songs progress. It just keeps... You just keep getting more and more out of it. Nature listen as well. I find more when I'm listening to this album. It's quite. It's it's deeper than you initially. You listen to it, um, and it's it it hits you straight away that it's just a good album. But each time I listen to it, I just uncover more, and it's a little bit deceptive because it doesn't seem like it's going to be one of those bands that you keep uncovering more each time. But I have been with Tardigrada, so it's been really rewarding. Lyrically, it's all in Swiss German, so no idea what's going on. It doesn't really matter. Um, but it's. Excellently crafted, atmospheric black metal. All the LPs are on uh, Eisenwald, and yeah, recommended. So check them out. Good, and uh, good shit. Yeah. Got to Good stuff. All right, Alan. All right. <clears throat> Pull another one from the uh, Bandcamp folder here that I just never have come across in the wild. Um, have a crew new. Hopefully, I'm close on the pronunciation. Uh, Finnish band. Folks have usually when their albums come out, they seem to get like a lot of hype. And it's been a few years, so I feel like we're maybe a little overdue for the next one. But um, the thing that stands out the most to me with Havakrunu is you know they have you know this kind of almost you know Viking infused uh, element to black metal. The song structures are you know, like very fast, but kind of rolling, very melodic, very catchy. A lot of you know double bass drum propelling it all along so you know some elements that can certainly be in black metal but you know they're really sort of brought to the fore here made kind of a central part of the sound and it works just glorious these albums are so much fun to listen to chant along to scream along to um it's almost the opposite of DSBM. It's more like, yeah, really get your adrenaline pumping and you will know, want you to just, you know, put a pot on your head and you'll know, rage out into the snow of your backyard to you know, fight the pagan hordes or something. Um, really nicely done stuff. This one's the second album. I'll butcher the title as best I can. Uh, Joe Nakvi Polkan Portet. And while I like proof, <clears throat> liked you know that one a lot this one got a lot of praise when it came out then the third album came out i'm not even going to try to pronounce that one uh it, it felt like you know they just took this and ratcheted it up to yet another level so yeah, yeah really, really cool, cool band, band. Very, very fun, fun project, project to listen to too. and uh, uh getting a little echo, echo probably oh well, from eric he's got his, he's got his... We'll, that's all right we'll get it fixed here in a second, in a second. but yeah have yeah, a crew new hopefully, hopefully new album in the near future a uh, very fun, enjoyable band to listen to. I can get very burned out on the Viking metal kind of motif very quickly. It's fun, but it's been done a thousand times, and the bands often are doing pretty similar, playing it pretty safe with the song structures. Hava Krenu just finds a way to take that and make it very exciting and interesting again, where most bands just end up sounding like one another and don't hold my attention. So, yep. Cool band, Hava Crew New. And hello to Eric. What's up, Eric? Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Appreciate you having me. I'm sorry I'm tardy. Don't feel tardy. Don't feel tardy. <laughs> We're getting a, a bad uh, loop. <clears throat> uh, uh, delay. delay. Well, we're going to go with Simon while Eric gets yeah. that sorted. Yep, we'll give Eric a moment or two to get that. Assorted. Back to me already, is it? Okay. Uh, actually, oh, it's you, me. Marty. Yep. Shit. Sorry, hey, I you, just Marty. did have a new, so you should be up next. Well, I couldn't pick, I couldn't show Arcanum, which is a band I've always really liked. I like the simplistic, emotive riffs. So I went with the, the Finnish band Panfaga. Drengs Kepper. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a bunch of other records as well. Storm is another one. There's stuff that came before it. 
this sounds to me a lot like a modern day Arcanum band. Um, this band is now done. He ended it, but, um, from here on out, I don't know. It might all be sketch. Who knows? Who knows? Alan has, uh, set me straight on some stuff. I picking shit. I don't know anything about, but, uh, yeah, Panfaga really solid. This came out on Nordvis back in the day. And, um, I mean, super catchy without being punk. It's just really well-written black metal. Is this the one where he's got the track suit? No, there's there are pictures of him holding an acoustic guitar in a track suit. Um, it's not that. It's very weird. The dude behind it really messed with the aesthetic. It wasn't your typical corpse painted guy in the woods type of thing. It's just really well-written, passionate, powerful, melodic, yet a level of uh, dissonance. Well-produced black metal from Finland. Panfaga, mm-hmm. Drengskepper. Awesome. Check these guys out if you have not heard them. Excellent. One man project. Yeah, you sent me those, uh, I guess, maybe about a year ago. And those are both really, really good albums. I've enjoyed those a lot. Eric, it's good to see you, my friend. How are you? Nope. Muted. You're muted. Wait, are you muted? Yep, hold on. You're muted. It says it shows your mic's muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there, there you go. go. Yep. Sweet. Perfect. Perfect. Sounds good. Sorry. I forgot this fucking blue snowball is a piece of trash, so. <laughs> it says sits too close to your speakers. That's why. It's uh, picking up the. Marty, the no, it's a piece of trash. It's trash, yeah, Marty. Yeah. It's trash. <laughs> But it's good to see you, and you're the, the the spearhead for this uh the topic tonight. Thank you so much for it. We've been having fun with it. A lot of people in the chat tonight. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, I haven't been able to tune in at all because of work. So I, I apologize for the lateness. It's just like I've been uh, hounding my supervisor all week for clients, and he hit me up earlier this morning and was like, "I got you clients today," and I'm like, "Fuck." But, uh, that's okay. That's no. Do that, man. Don't. We had a cover. So, That's that was good. We had four people. That way, it, it was all there was a buffer, so it all worked out. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So you got some catching up to. Do. Why don't you run through like five of them and okay, be on. yeah, fucking cool. Uh, so Wait, Marty well, already. First talked- of all, first of all, first of all, what made you decide this was the topic for tonight? What was a good, <laughs> what what made you think so that, like fuck yeah nowadays black metal? It's well, it's been on my mind for a bit because I was so I was in one of my shops. Um, and I was talking to the, the dude who runs it. And I, I've talked about the shop many, many times on my own channel. Um, and he was just talking a lot of shit about nowadays black metal. He's like, he's like, yeah, so-and-so has pretty good taste for nowadays black metal. And I was like, this, bear in mind, this is somebody who considers schizophrenia a sepultura sellout record. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know, tongue in cheek a little bit. But um, so it got me kind of thinking about, all right not not all nowadays black metal is trash like in fact a whole lot of it's really fucking good um and so i just kind of started thinking about stuff post 2000 as far as like in terms of non-legacy artists um that have been putting out material after the 2000s um, right back. in some sort of you know incarnation um which makes it a bit more difficult because like, you know, I, there's like, say like a couple of Zaster records that I might've picked, but you know, he was doing demos in like 97, 98, mm-hmm. same with Leviathan. Although I, I would count Lurker of Chalice, but I'd assume he's probably already been mentioned. So I, I didn't pull that one out. Um, anyhow, that's, that's what kind of brought it to mind. And yeah, everybody says fuck nowadays black metal. So I thought, fuck yeah, nowadays black metal. Anyway. I like it. It comes off the tongue. It's good. Yeah. Exactly. It kind of rolled. It, it's got some, what, what do they say? Je ne sais quoi or whatever. Je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Je ne sais it's quoi. Yeah. It's clever. Yeah. yeah. It's worked so, well. Folks have enjoyed it so far. Yeah. Marty just talked about uh, Panfaga, which I, I left in the car, so I couldn't pull it. Um, but I've got uh, his last two records in there. Um, and he was talking about Arcanum. Yeah, you can't mention Arcanum because that dude was you know, doing shit in the early 90s. Um, but somebody in the comments just mentioned, so I figure I might as well show these. Wagner Odegaard, and these are two projects that are oh, him yeah. primarily. We've got Vulcanas, uh, this one here, and then Tom Het, this one here. Um, this is probably my favorite material from 
these respective projects, but they are primarily him. Um, I'm not very familiar with his solo work that's under his own name, but these two projects are great, and it's just total Arcanum worship. In fact, it, you'd be hard pressed to really figure a difference between the two albums. They sound almost the same, like it's the same band. Um, really good stuff, just really like pagan, um, a little punky. Um, I just really like these. They 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 have a really good flow. Um, the recording quality is perfect for the sound that that he's going for on these records. Um, just really good stuff. And I could show one at a time, but since it's the same dude, there you go. Who is this? Well, Wolkenaz and Tomhet with Wagner Odegaard uh, spearheading okay. both both projects. Um, just really cool Arcanum worship. It's nothing original. He's not bringing anything new to the table. Like I said, it just kind of I, I brought it up because somebody mentioned it in the comments, and freaking Marty talked about Penfaga, last band. So this kind of makes sense for me to follow. Um, I probably prefer this one a little bit more to this one. This one has a little bit more weird ambience uh, attached to it. This is just pretty much straight ahead, punky, pagany black metal. It's it's just they're both really good. Keep on going. Do a couple more. Like I said, you're you're oh. behind. <laughs> okay, I'm behind. All right. Uh, well, how about I talk about a record that came out last year? This was uh, I, I toyed with doing a, a you know best of list, um, but I've just fucking been busy with work and it's hard to fit in videos right now. Um, but this would have been really high on my list for last year, and that's this record from uh, Black Eucharist, uh, oh, yeah. New York band. Um, again, it's not really anything that's reinventing the wheel this is straight up profanatica worship um but profanatica hasn't done anything interesting or like really lively in probably the last i don't know 10 years maybe um i love this record man it's so good it's just it's it's super blasphemous like it's it's like the anti-christian tongue-in-cheek gnarliness that you want out of a profanatica record but without being boring like profanatica is these days um I don't know. This just really hits a spot for me. Uh, the first time I heard the first track, I was like, oh yeah, that's going to be a blind buy based off of that one sound bite right there for sure. Um, and I don't remember where I first, where this first came across my radar. I don't want to say it came up on like Instagram, maybe, probably. Um, but it's just super good. Uh, Stygian Blackhand put this out. Um, so it's a really nice presentation. Uh, that, not that that really matters, but um, it's just really good. No, it like does. If you, it's it, all part of the package. You know? If you like that Profanatica sound or that Demoncy sound, like this record is going to be your thing. I mean, look at these dudes. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to check that out. That sounds like me. It's it's stellar. Yeah, if you like that back sack, back sack, so you'll like this sound. Damn straight. Sure. <laughs> all yeah. right, cool. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, it's really fucking good. It's it's a, like I said, it would have been probably in top five of 2023 for me for sure. Hello. Do two more. Yeah, so two more. Okay. Damn. All right. Man. Well, how many did you pick? I don't know a lot. Okay. Well, yeah. Might as well. <laughs> uh, has anybody brought up Mallow Carpatten? Nope. Because this is their Not first yet. record, and it's the best thing they've ever done. I don't care what anybody says about the third or the fourth record. This is the best right here. This is the best. The best. Never heard the it. Best. It's stellar. This is more just straight up Master's Hammer worship, which at the time, like, nobody was doing, really, uh, mm -hmm. when this came out. I want to say, like, 2014, 2015 for this record. Um, I think the tape was self-released, but I think Invictus picked it up for, uh, for the vinyl release um this is just awesome it's just, it's just so good there was like really nobody aping that sound at the time that this came out so it was like you had master's hammer and then you had mallow carpat and a little bit of like mystifier in there and a little bit of like necromantia too for like added weirdness but just really really good really good stellar black metal um really from like the czech republic no i don't think they're, they're not czech they're like or Chechia, or uh, I don't know. I can look real quick. Can you consult the Oracle, Sir Marty? Sir Martin? Ten. Um, I'm spelling it wrong. Yep. Ah, oh, fuck. Hey. Come on, get it right. It's so easy to pronounce and say. M e l o k a r p a t 
Carpeton. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I can't oh. spell it. <laughs> I don't know. Malo Okay, here's chat, here's a good one. I like this one a whole lot, and I'm going to show this, and I need to grab some food because I'm fucking starving. Uh. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Fucking. They're from I'm Slovakia. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, this, Slovakia. Okay, Slovakia. So, uh, what do we have here? We have Wormlust from uh, yeah. Iceland. Um. Progressive, weird, fucking cosmic black metal. This shit is just very weird. Super yeah. psychedelic, super, super spacey. Um, it's like if if Hawkwind were a black metal band, it would be this band right here. Hmm. Um, just really good. Uh, from like that first wave of the new wave of Icelandic black metal, like yeah, uh, yeah. I think this predates. I think this predates. Um, Shit. Uh, what's that? The, the one, the one band that blew up Icelandic black metal. Well, there was that one, and there was the one with a, it started with an M. I can't think of. Uh, Miss Therming. Miss Therming. Miss Therming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this, I want to say, predates the first Miss Therming. If I'm, I might be wrong on that, but I might not be. I didn't do date checks on most of these, so uh, I just know that they're all post two thousand. Um, just really stellar, really weird. Like if you were like the like Orancy Pazuzu, uh, yeah, from absolutely. Finland, yeah. yeah, you're gonna fucking really dig this. Um, it's a little bit more straightforward black metal, I think, than at least current Orancy Pazuzu. But um, it's just really good. I like this a lot. It's it's has you know echoes of second wave stuff, but um, it's it's got that weird space space vibes that like you get with like a Hawkwind record or like if you were to like say c compare it to something in a, in a totally different genre, say Worm Worm uh, Lust to black metal is what Sudoku is to grindcore. There you go. And if you don't know yeah. Sudoku, P S U D O K U Sudoku shit rules. So does this. I play Sudoku on my phone sometimes. You're a nerd, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's different though. <laughs> All right, go eat something. We'll get on. We'll move on with the procession here. Uh, Simon, you're oh, up. Oh, right. Okie dokie. Um, okay, so this is another really, really fantastic band. Very riffy black metal band. Um, I like the riffy black metal. It seems to be mostly what I picked out today. Um, this is Nocturnal Triumph. Um, very, very fast band, mostly. Um, hearing some feedback. Is that me? Wow. Oh, weird sound. That was some buzzing sound. Um, this is like mostly melodic and fast raw riffs. Sometimes gives away to like sort of deep beat occasionally, but it's mostly very full throttle, savage black metal. The lead guitar's got a bit of a Sumberlane kind of feel to it. Um, and there's a bit of like emotional melody to everything these guys do as well. Ashley reminds me a bit of Dawn quite a bit. Uh, or it's like on the left hand sometimes it sounds like dawn on the right hand it sounds like niflheim it depends where you land in the middle of a song um but it's always very triumphant sounding so this is um the first album uh lights graven uh no this is fangs of misery's past that's the fangs of misery's past uh that's the second one i pulled them in the wrong order uh this is uh the debut uh lights graven womb from 2016 yeah really good art um and these two were ridiculously hard to get for a while they were go to rx but early presses when he used to do like a hundred and then just tell you to get fucked now they're on amal Fati and he produced heaps and heaps of them and then there's the third one which is easily the best it's self-titled just called nocturnal triumph um and it's just fantastic uh this is from 2022 um all three are excellent but this one is the one that i return to the most so if you just like it that fast, melodic, riffy, uh, but still a pretty savage sound. And like I said, that sort of Sumberlane lead and a little bit of Dawn in there. Nocturnal Triumph, very good stuff. Definitely check them out. Right on. Alan, you're eating. Are you good to go? You're muted. There you go. No, I'm good to go, folks. We're just asking about uh, Thulkandra in the chat and uh yeah, their 2023 album I thought was uh was quite good. We y'all covered 
a Thor Kendra album on the album club quite a while back. It was the blue one with the Reaper on the cover. <laughs> yeah, and it, it really which is all the, of them. <laughs> you got yeah. a pretty lukewarm reception from the album club panel, as I recall. Yeah, but, it's uh, a good record, but they're good. It's a good band, but it's nothing new or original, you know. No, no, I, I did think yeah, the one they did last year that was definitely a cut above the one that y'all did for the album club. So um, let's see. <clears throat> Here's a band I've liked. For a long time, Marty, I think you're the only other person I've ever heard mention this band. So, cheers to you. It is uh, Germany's Morrigan. They've done eight albums over time. Very Bathory influenced. With black metal vocals. Yeah. mm -hmm, With more black and vocals. The thing that's kind of neat with them in terms of their Bathory adulation is some bands like Bathory and they just try to sound like the first few albums. Other bands like Bathory, and they just try to sound like the last few albums. Morgan kind of figures, why not do both? <laughs> so uh, you, you'll get some songs, you know, in a very kind of you know, raw style that could have been on the first couple of Bathory uh, releases. But, you know, then you'll get, you know, the more kind of more epic, you know, build up a lot, you know, that would have come out of like, you know, the Hammer Horror, you know, Twilight of the Gods era. And they're good at both versions. Mm-hmm. It's not like Morgan only delivers on the fast tracks and then the others are boring. <laughs> they're, they're actually quite good with both styles. Oh, what's Mike say? Sorry. Uh, looking for originality and new black metal is like looking for a person with all their teeth in Alabama. Yeah. Oh, what, you mean all the teeth in their mouth? Like they might have all the teeth under the, you know, <laughs> in the drawer. In the Two fairy hadn't come and gotten these yet. <laughs> I'm holding on to these for my wedding day. <laughs> yeah. Eliminated, you know, uh, three people from our uh, audience. Okay. But uh, yeah, so Morgan's always done very well at both styles of Bathory worship. They, again, they've done a bunch of albums. The most recent was, I think, 2022 uh, after a long hiatus. So um, the most recent album was okay. It probably. That one leaned a little bit more onto the the slower side of things. It didn't. It needed one or two more of the ass kicker type tracks for my tastes, but they've never really did a bad album that I can recall. I may have missed one or two somewhere in the middle of the catalog, but uh, yeah, consistently good. If you want uh, both halves of the Bathory catalog in one place, Morgan does it very very well. This one, Enter Sea of Flames, is one of the earlier ones. It may be the debut. Uh, I get their early ones mixed up, but uh, yeah, you're pretty safe if you pick anything out of the first five Morgan albums to check out. They're usually, I still see them on distros from time to time, and they're usually not that expensive. It's not something that's become cult or expensive or hard to find. It's good stuff. I got all their albums. All of them are good. Before Um, they um, turned into Morgan, they were known as Mayhemic Truth. Yeah, they did some demo material under the Mayhemic Truth name. That probably that probably stuff was probably late nineties. It yeah. almost had to be. Yeah. But um the Mayhemic Truth stuff, now that may be hard to find. I'm not sure. There's a, a the only thing I've seen is a a, a song an album called um uh, Immemorium. It might be a yep. compilation of all the shit. I don't know. It is. Yep. 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 I got I got that way back in the day when I first got interested in the band. And it was a pain to find back then, but hey, maybe it's gotten reissued. I'm not sure. All right. Um, up next, let's go to Norway. We haven't hit Norway in a while. Let's do Norway. Um, there's a whole scene around the Trondheim area that's all kind of, it isn't what you would expect Norwegian black metal sound because it doesn't sound like it. Um, so I picked uh, Mara, uh, Ebony Tower, and the um, Spheres Like Death and Throne. I nearly picked those. 13th Witch. This right. is it doesn't sound scandinavian to me it's just kind of dark brooding there's a lot of like more half shouted sung type of vocals but with a lot of reverb kind of like in a church type of thing kind of like trying to sound ritualistic um Mm. it's very occult it's very occult sounding less norwegian sounding very occult sounding um And I and I, I do like it. I wish it was a little more Norwegian sounding. Another band that's kind of in this style that might be a little more aggressive than Mara is uh, Hordum Rife. 
I didn't yeah. pull out any. I figured I'm not going to pull a bunch of Trondheim bands, so I I just picked Mara. Um, the Hordum Rife stuff is good too. It's um they've done a split with Tolka and you know I don't know. It's just it's a different sound for Norway. It's very occult based, cavernous at times, but the riffs are pretty simplistic. In fact, I listened to this Ebony Tower today as I was gathering. I pulled them out. I'm like, oh shit. I haven't spun this in a while. I need to refamiliarize. So I put this on and um, it's more of a, a hammer horror vibe than a, a riffy album. It isn't very riffy. It's just kind of cavernous, dark. Mm -hmm. They're, they're portraying a mood more so than a, a, a you know, world rock and air guitar type stuff. So, I mean, it's good stuff. If you like super occultic type black metal, it's in there a lot of chanting a lot of ritualistic type sounds good stuff it's a good band um yeah eric yo what's up what's up no, you're I'm up just kidding. you <laughs> just talked about a tron nine band so fuck it here we go chaos ritual uh right up there with mare and fucking this band i think actually became uh oh, fuck uh dark sonority uh, if i'm if i remember right mm. um like up there with like celestial bloodshed um i talked about this record in my best reissues of 2023 record uh video um Svapt morgenrod uh this record is stellar just awesome occult driven black metal from norway trondheim specifically um but this is really riffy as opposed to the what marty just talked about um there's the original cover artwork i used to have this on cassette and i don't know where it went i lost it in like not my last move but the move before that if i, I think because I, I can't find it anywhere but um this got reissued last year and it fucking rules fan rules um one of these guys is dead now and that's why they changed their name hmm. um but yeah like same scene as like uh Beastcraft, I think, um, and then you know, Mare and freaking Dark Sonority and that kind of stuff. Um, Celestial Bloodshed, who I think are like probably the most infamous of all these bands. But um, this yeah, that awesome. guy. There's a guy in that band. They're fucking around with a gun, and the guy got shot and died. Yeah, he's yeah. he's dead too. Yeah, that guy died too. Um, yeah, maybe that's a guy I'm thinking about that's dead. I don't it know. It might Somebody be the same dude. Dead. Yeah, it's yeah. possible. Um, but yeah, this stuff is just really fucking. Super evil, super dark, super pissed. Uh, they hate Christ, which is always good. Um, <laughs> I just, I just love it. And this freaking reissue is stellar. It's like one of the best reissues that I've, I've picked up in years. Um, is in terms of like packaging and everything that comes along with it. It's, it's killer. Um, but th don't let that be the reason that you buy it. Like buy it because it's awesome, not because it looks cool. Also buy it because it looks cool. But yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um yeah chaos ritual with a k not a ch because they're cult <clears throat> never Cavolt. heard of them <laughs> k Cavolt. for cavolts yeah uh, <laughs> album rules it's it's probably one of my favorite norwegian uh black metal records of all time honestly the most annoying um, ob strip ever <laughs> yeah it's, it's like the it's, a, it's inconvenient pack it's not as inconvenient as a box set but it's still pretty inconvenient mm -hmm. um highly recommended uh, like for sure this is one of my favorite black metal records of all time if i were to make right a top on. 10 list this would probably be in it awesome. all right good one and <clears throat> simon's up before simon starts just uh yeah melanie popped in uh, to say thanks to folks <clears throat> for anybody who joined late we were uh any super chats that were given tonight, we're just handing all that over to Melanie from Melanie Loves Death Metal. Since uh, she unexpectedly lost her job last week, she's out there hunting for a new job already. But, you know, we want to make sure uh, her and the family are taken care of. Got, you know, enough cash to cover bills and stuff. Until Can I just say, Melanie, Melanie, I got laid off back in April and it was, it sucked. It was the worst, the worst. And I did a complete career change still kind of the worst but it's getting better so I and it will right. get better it does it's, it takes a minute it takes it it's fucking the, the shock of it's the worst yeah yep yep i've been there too yeah but yeah we've had over a dozen people uh donate super chats to melanie we're up to almost 300 dollars at this point so yep. thank you very much to everybody who's uh chipped in uh to help make sure melanie and the family 
escape, you know, take a, take a little bit of that stress away while she's uh, out there looking for the next job. The goal is so that the kids don't even notice it fucking happened. That's exactly. the goal. So that's a great goal to have. Yep. Right on. Um, Alan, you're up. I thought Simon was up. Oh, he just went. Oh, Hello? Oh, no, I didn't. No. He's standing there waiting. <laughs> look look at him. He, he looks like a sad puppy because you're about to skip him. You're going to leave him at the pound for, you know, I, I know I'm all shiny and look fun to take home, but si Simon gets a <laughs> <laughs> it's a pet for, pet for life, not just for Christmas. <laughs> all right. Um, this one, uh, nobody's shown Fortress tonight. Maybe somebody will. I'm not showing Fortress. Oh, but I didn't think about them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought somebody might, but this is a very similar band. This is a band called Cantique Le Pro. They're from Quebec, as all of those uh, style of bands are. There is something in the water in Quebec. They, the, the black metal bands from that area, that that location, and in this time period, have got a very similar sound. Fortress, uh, Cantique Le Pro, uh, Monarch with a Q, uh, another band. That there's there's heaps of them that have all got a very similar sound to them. Um, and this is, yeah, this is one of them. Very icy, very, very tremolo heavy um, black metal. Lots of blasting drums, but it does slow down and has lots of experimenting with sort of the cymbals and things and a lot of tom rolls. Keeps it kind of interesting. Deeper than the usual raspy vocals, uh, which I thought was quite a standout. Um, and then sometimes sort of supported in the background with like dark chanting and things like that. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice sort of really well-rounded um bit of french canadian black metal quebec is black metal uh this is their second release from 2018 it's the only one i've got there's one before it and there's i think a third one now um uh oh no that's the one that's coming thanks, in dave. march there's one thanks dave. coming in march uh called le banish le banishment which i think is the banishment um the sample track online sounds very good so yeah cantique le pro um they don't do much but when they do it's really good uh trey magnifique Perhaps so. There you go. Can't take the pro. I'll write it in the ch in the uh, chat because it's all foreign and stuff. But they're good. All right, Alan. All right, yeah. Just uh, saying a big thank you to David there. Yep. For thank you, David. <coughs> with uh, Melanie. All right. So next up, this one. Pretty sure I heard about this band from Ben over on uh, Brain Smasher. They started out as an Atlanta area project, but apparently relocated to Detroit at some point and are still putting out stuff, but I uh, haven't heard the more recent ones. Uh, the project is called Galder. Uh, oh, Detroit? Uh, uh, it's the Metal Archives mothership says they are now in Detroit, Michigan later in the career. But well, Atlanta what do you know? <laughs> so, uh, Marty, you got to... You got some grim and frosty friends up there you yeah. didn't even know you had next door. Yep. Um, They're not next door. We're, yeah, it's a bit of a drive. Six, six hours to the south next door. Nah, it's about four and a half. It's not so bad. Uh, okay, okay. Chicago's so, six. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway, um, Galder here on the first album did something kind of interesting. It's you know meant to be in the Burzum mold, you know, early, grim, frosty kind of black metal, very much drawing their influence style, no doubt. The production's interesting on this one. It's a lo-fi kind of production. It's not hissy or, you know, really trebly the way you tend to think of bands aping, you know, Dark Throne and stuff like that. It's got a weird kind of fuzzy quality to it. It sounds very wintry, for lack of a better description. It fits this cover perfectly. And I always kind of liked the fact that the cover was mostly gray or in white. That again, it's not going for just, you know, a bunch of black with a few little, you know, corpse painted white flecks somewhere. It's actually, you know, the figures in black, but just way back there in the background that is, you know, much more of just this gray and white landscape. And the production really just accentuates the music. It gives this, it gives it this very funny kind of charming quality where, you're not sure if they were trying to make it sound wintry or if they just, yeah, didn't have a whole lot to work with in terms of production, but it just ended up working beautifully. Um, they've done some other albums as well. This is the second one. We, we've seen this woodcut art on other really, yes. 
<clears throat> I, I like do like the blue treatment they gave it for the second release. It, this one they cleaned up the production quite a bit, so it doesn't have that you know real kind of blizzard white out kind of sonic thing going on. Still good music, still working in the Burzum mold, just you know with a cleaner production to it. The catalog gets a little jumbled around this point because this one was released second, but uh, this material was actually recorded second, but this stuff didn't get released until a little bit later as the third album. So this one, when if you're listening to them chronologically as they came out, this one sounds a little odd because it's a little uh, less refined than the previous album. But it makes sense once you get them lined up in the order they were recorded in. So yeah, Galder, other notes on them. Um, some people raise an eyebrow. They Early on, they were on a label that has a pretty lousy reputation. <clears throat> um, the guy said, you know, in 2019, you know, he got not the rights to his stuff back. He didn't really know and or pay a lot of attention to it, admittedly, back then. But, you know, he had started paying more attention to, yeah, the, you know, politics and stuff labels were dealing with. He didn't want to be associated with that kind of label anymore, so he had pulled his stuff off. You can still get it all through uh, Bandcamp. You can buy his whole discography on Bandcamp for pretty cheap if you're okay with digital music. It's a good way to go. He did release a split in 2023, but I have not heard that, so I can't really comment on it. It's been a while since any of the albums came out, but the project is still technically active. So yeah, Galder, kind of a, you know, another one that's in that Burzum clone, but doing it justice kind of category of black metal. All right. Yeah, Mike uh, commented up here earlier. Shit. Where is it? I lost it. I lost it. There it is. Nope, I'll go catch up on the, uh, yeah. Uh, they had a really interesting story start out on Darker Than Black and then changed their tune on NFBM and are now anti-fascist. Yes, I couldn't think of the label name a minute ago, but yeah, moved off of Darker Than Black and yeah, were, was very public and sort of supporting other you know directions in uh, their kind of worldview. So that's cool. All right, Marty, I think that means I pass it back over to you now. All right. They were mentioned in the chat, so let's bring them out. From Russia, Grima. Um, I don't know which one this is. I think this is their second. I don't know for sure. But this is uh... <laughs> Frostbitten. The font was throwing me. I'm like, is that Cyrillic? But no, it's not. Frostbitten. These guys are pretty savage, um, fast, well-written. Black metal this is on Nature Mocked Productions. In uh, Severian Atmospheric Black Metal. Oh, that's the the title of their music. These guys, you know, you got to have, you know, the artsy craftsy nature of metalheads. It's it's a thing. You got to either have corpse paint or a mask. These guys got they go the mask route, but um, it's a solid band. Very solid. Um, atmospheric at times, speedy at times. They kind of encompass all the stuff and put it into a package of well written songs. I have this one and I have the one that came before it on CD and no complaints. It's really solid, well done black metal. Um, I wish I could in this one is it goes for the frostbit and there's a coldness to this record. If I remember right, it's been a minute since I've listened to it. I've gotten so much. I've fallen off the wagon so bad. It's, it's embarrassing what's happening over here. It is embarrassing, but, um, yeah, check out Grima. They're on Bandcamp. Very good, well-written Russian black metal. In fact, my next pick is also Russian. I know they're not uh, a favorite country on everybody's lips these days, but some good people in there making some good music for sure here and there. So don't judge the person. Judge the country, the government, right? The government. Um, Eric. Yo. I keep forgetting I'm, I'm muting myself whenever I'm not talking. What's happening, everybody? You're up. I am up. Um, hang on. I'm typing the name of this band in the chat because people will be like, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this Samantha? is a band. Yeah. This is a band I discovered fairly recently, um, which is a shame because they're local to me. Um, 
put out by the label Satanic Royalty uh, Records, who are fairly, I mean, they've been around a few years, but they're pretty new. Um, he put out the uh, Dripping record that a lot of people loved last year. And the new EP just dropped uh, through Satanic Royalty. Uh, a lot of cool bands on their roster, and this is one of them. Uh, this is Is It Me? Um, huh, again, never even from, heard of that record. Killer from artwork. Seattle. Uh, Marty, don't don't go looking for it, okay? Because I'm going to need your address at some point, and um, okay, you got a care package coming. So, Yay! anyway, uh, um, is it me? Thank you. This is called "Leaving This World, Leaving It All Behind." Um, again, Satanic Royalty Records put this out, and this is just stellar black. It's like it's really hard to pigeonhole this record. Like it's black metal. Um, at its core, but it's very technical. It's a little spacey, um, and it's it's super emotional. Um, it's almost like an uplifting black metal record, if such a thing existed. Um, just really good, really unique. Like I, I'm hard pressed to think of a band to really honestly compare this to. Uh, I really can't think of one. To be to be totally fair, um, they have a very unique sound that i have not heard any other bands playing modern black metal um searching for uh and it's one of the things that really endeared this this record to me um it's also like i said it's very uh uplifting and a little bit like empowering almost mm. um it definitely is a record that has a sense of itself and um knows where it kind of wants to be in the genre um it's just really cool it's killer uh, artwork, man. I love the yeah. cover art on that thing. Yeah, it's super good. Um, these guys have been involved in projects uh, probably for a while now. Um, you get the band there. Typical Pacific Northwesterners, of course. Lyrics. Um, but it's just a great record. It's super, like I said, it's super unique. I can't think of it, really any other black metal bands that are going for a sound like this right now. <clears throat> um which is one of the really cool things about it. and the fact that like it's at the same time it's, it's super atmospheric but it's also very technical and um i just i just dig it man it's it's everything that, that they put to the, put together and this is like a winning formula it's killer um you know a lot of people cry like probably like poser shit at this but i just think it's really good I like to, I like, you know, as much as I like fucking knuckle dragging second wave worship, like it is cool to hear a band trying to do something a little bit different now and then. Oh yeah. And this band is one of those bands. Right on. Sounds interesting. Um, Very. Oh, and here, let me, let me, there, there's the, uh, the band name for everybody. If you wanted to know. Would never have guessed that. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> is, is me. Yeah. It's super good. Like I, I, I feel yeah, like if, if everybody in this panel, like Marty, would definitely appreciate. It, which is one of the reasons why Marty again don't go looking for it. Um, okay. But um, I think like Brain Smasher would probably dig it. Um, you know, definitely like they, they, they kind of a little bit wear their politics on the sleeve, and they're left leaning for sure. So if you're one of those people who's like, it's not black metal with the anti fascist, so fuck yourselves first of all. But you know. For people into uh, anti-fascist black metal, we put out uh, two Excellences records this year. So That's check true. out last year. Check out um, Hymns of Collapse and oh my god, <laughs> I've had too many. Uh, no, there's two. One's an acoustic record. One's a straight up ripping ass black metal record. They're both really great records. Check it out. Anti-fascist black metal and folk. Anyway. Oh. What's up? What's up? Um, right back. Okay. Well, this is, um, I think, the first finished thing I've shown tonight, I think. And this is a uh, obviously very satanic-themed band. Uh, the cover artwork on their stuff is rules, too. Uh, this is a band called Malum, and that's their little, or the, that's their insignia up there. I'm showing all of them. M A L U M. Um, band formed in uh, 2013. Um, I've got three of their albums here. I'll show. I'm missing their first one, but I've got the three newer ones. Uh, this is um, Night of Luciferian Light from 2017, which tells you exactly how blasphemous it's going to be. Um, it's just that, like, 
that Horner and Behexen and but really Sargeist, I think, is what I get from this kind of thing. It is just so ripping, um, so good. This one's probably the best cover artwork, I think. I love the artwork on this one. Um, this is uh, uh, Legion from 2019. Um, it's probably the one I like the least, but the cover artwork's the best. A um, little bit of a step down from the first album, but it is still really good. Uh, doesn't change the style that much. But then this one, 2021, Devil's Creation. Bit of a reflection. I should have taken these out of the covers. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, whatever. There you go. Devil's Creation uh, from 2021. This is starting to pull in a little bit of that Abigail sound, the early stuff, but it is just just ferocious Finnish satanic black metal. Um, there's most part it's just fast and evil. There's some foot stomping kind of tracks as well. A um, little bit of you know, the, it's cleaner production the further you get, and uh, there's some sort of keyboards balanced in there. Uh, the drums are absolutely furious. And on this album, it's the guy from Arch Goat doing the drums. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. He's hilariously called Goat Aggressor on this album. Made me laugh. <laughs> Some, I just love black metal sometimes. Goat Aggressor. And, like, every every sort of stanza. Goat Void like every, Aggressor. Every, exactly. Every fourth line, they, they end with someone going, Satan! So it's one of those bands. It's just ripping. All their stuff is good. Malum, M-A-L-U-M out of finland uh yeah check them out good stuff overtures of uprising was the other excellence this record it just came to me sorry <laughs> i think that you'd like Malum, uh, marty really you should check out Malum. yeah i like arch goat uh, it's more, more of the side guys i probably need but yeah that that's more of the side guys and the hexen kind of sound um, ah right happens, on. That, happens to have the I, that's, drum that's my happy that's my happy zone yeah. in that so you like Malum. Yeah. yeah all right alan oh i'm sorry i'm still stuck on the image of you know somebody doing like you know a hellhammer cover like you know, aggressor ah, aggressor <laughs> ah, go to aggressor <laughs> there, there's fun to be had there yeah, yeah another time perhaps all right band i mentioned from time to time uh out of belarus Pavesh N. Mm weird name don't know what it translates as one man project no surprise there first couple albums include uh this one pyrification uh, all the early artwork and stuff had the guy um doing photo shoots in one of those uh, ossuaries in, in europe the you know big you know chapel of bones kind of things kind of, it was kind of a theme for the first couple of albums the first few are decent. You're going for you know, a very blasphemous, kind of hellish type of sound, you know, really tortured screams and all that. Kind of, you know, a very a thicker, murkier style of black metal. It works pretty well. I think the last two albums, though, Paveshin has really started to come into his own. The uh, Maniac Manifest album had some more unique elements. You could tell there were some influences creeping in from other musical styles, maybe for the first time, or at least becoming more prominent in some of the songwriting for the first time. Um, you know, songs were becoming much more distinct, really standing out from each other better. <clears throat> Very memorable riffs in some of them uh, as well. And then last year's album was more of a concept piece. Um, and that one had, you know, sort of a new level of theatricality into it. Still very, you know, harsh, shrieking, raw black metal at its core. But you can tell that, yeah, they're trying to, you know, find their own niche and not just be, you know, sort of another, you know, nameless, faceless, you know, Satan, goat, uh, aggressing kind of uh, act. Sorry, couldn't resist. Had to go back to it. But yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of neat to see how this project is evolving and doing some different things and doing them pretty well. Um, what's one I want to keep tabs on? So Paveshen, not a household name by any means, but I think we're five albums in at this point, so um, they're getting pretty established, and they're not just churning out the same album over and over as bands of this ilk sometimes are prone to. They're actually putting the albums together pretty carefully now. They've seemed to have a direction they want the project to go in, and uh, it's going pretty well. Pavish and from Belarus. 
All right, we're going to stay in the same section of the 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 world there, and we're going back to Russia. Um, band called a, a solo project, Civid Yar. Uh, this is the Grief album. I also have. They're all it's all in Cyrillic, and if you go to look up this band on like Metal Archives, if you don't know the Cyrillic, you can't type in civic yar and it, sh it pops up so it it's a pain in the dick to find out information about this band but this guy um actually a fun fact he reached out to Bynrun a while ago about putting out an album working a collaboration and um it's so good but it just it it kind of strikes me as panopticon in a lot of ways and i figured you know you know, me and Austin were talking about it, and I'm like, you know, it's, they're awesome. I like, I own some stuff by them. It's a good band, but I just, you know, we have a Panopticon on the label already. So anyway, he went on to uh, Avant Garde Music. It's really well done, atmospheric black metal, uh, varying levels of t intensity as far as tempos go. Again, it's, does it sound exactly like Panopticon? No, there isn't as much uh, overt folk influence on it but it has the same feel and spirit to me as uh panopticon um so if you're into that st stuff i could see these two bands touring together for sure um it's really really well done he's got a bunch of stuff i only have a, a fraction of it but um russian black metal that's not sketch it's good shit good stuff for sure marty what was the name again david missed it <laughs> Uh, it's spelled S I V J. Well, I can't, I can't see. Hold on. You're not going to find it. You have to know the Cyrillic. You have to, it's, it's a pain in the ass. I promise. I tried looking up stuff before we went live. What is it? Marty, happening? don't you mean a pain in the dick? I do mean a pain in the dick. Uh, S I V Y J. Second word. <laughs> yar. Yar. Y -A -R. yar civic yar <laughs> but uh yeah it's all in cyrillic but this is the grief album it's spelled it looks like hope mm. but i don't know okay. anyway Could be rope. good luck rope rope good luck <laughs> It's like I said it's on bandcamp it, or on uh, the metal <laughs> archives it's in the cyrillic name so godspeed that's all a bunch of backwards crazy shit so yeah eric you're up i'm up huh all right cool yes sir uh did anybody talk about holder yet i was curious yep i figured we did yep. uh this isn't holder but this is uh holder uh, affiliated apparently here you go north uh, of the rockies uh deciphered it with his uh that's it so oh, impure. we have impure um, I think these guys for a while were like the backing band for Holder when she would play live, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I had no idea there was a relation. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is their EP, Damned. Um, probably my favorite material. They put. They've got a full length out and a compilation, which is like, I, I think, uh, a collection of two or three EPs. I think maybe it's just two. It's this one. This EP, first of all, won me over because, A, it rules. This band, <laughs> again not reinventing the wheel uh as much as i praise the originality of the last band i showed this band has, has zero originality this is just straight up holocausto worship from fucking brazil like this, that's all this is it's almost it's bestial almost war metal but like it has that brazilian sort of flair to it um the other reason this this uh, ep won me over is because it's it's three original tracks and then one cover and i usually fucking hate covers because i think they're lazy for the most part especially on an ep but in this case they cover slayer and it's really easy to, to, to kind of cop out when you cover slayer but the track that they cover on this is fight till death and you're not going to see a lot of bands covering fight till death by slayer that's a and cool it, that's a cool pick yeah the version on this is just it's stellar it's, it's it reminds me of like um remember that bathory tribute that came out like back in the late 90s or early early aughts and it had, I want to say, Angel Corpse covering Equimanthorn, which was like uh, very unexpected for like an Angel Corpse cover of a Bathory track, in my opinion. Mm. Um, same same deal on this. I didn't expect it, and it fucking is just cool as shit. Um, and in terms of the music itself, really stellar. Um, 
I love this EP. I like it a little bit better than the full length. I think that Impure are more of an EP band than a full length band. This is a seven inch they put out as well. Um, really, really cool stuff. Just very, it's brutal. It's bestial. It's it's like I said, it's, it's pretty much Holocausto worship, but without like the weird potential sketch. Um, it's cool shit. I like it a lot. And I highly recommend it. The full length's really good too, but I think the EPs are where it's at. Right on. Yeah, that's good to know. I've only got the the full length. That took that full length took nearly two years to arrive from that horrible Chaos Records in Mexico. They're oh, shipping dude. And just excuses dude. from that label. Let me tell you, the only thing I've ever ordered from Chaos Records is a is a an excruciate T shirt. Yeah. Uh, Did you get and it? It took it took. <laughs> eight months for that to arrive yeah. from Mexico city. So I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but yeah, you also no, have to bear in mind, anything coming out of Mexico is coming out of Mexico city. So everything that's getting mailed out of Mexico to, to a different country or any, anywhere in Mexico is going through. They only have the one central hub and that's in Mexico city. That's why everything mm. takes so long. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Well, this was a double whammy. It was bef- before they even shipped it. There was just like nine months of oh, it's stuck in the plant, and then yep. other labels were saying he can't afford to get them out of the plant, and just the whole thing was a. Ah, Chris. Yeah. I'm not surprised. There's a I, I've heard yeah. a, a nightmare like you know South America, Central America. There, there's a uh, the corruption in the mail system, the thievery in the mail system is a thing. Yeah. So well, it's. I've yeah. ordered from every from you know everywhere, pr- pretty much everywhere in South America, Central America, and the longest I've ever it, it's ever taken is, is from Mexico. Yeah, okay. I, I got I got stuff from Colombia in less time than I got from Mexico or, or Chile. Uh, it seems like it Argentina. go through the same hub. It seems like you would have to stop up there on the way. I don't know, whatever. That's cool. You got it anyway. But yeah, impure, impure. That stuff rules. Check it out. It's mm. super brutal. Yeah, I have to get that EP. Um. So I don't hear anyone ever talk about this band, and I think this might be, correct me if I'm wrong, the first English band I've, that we've shown tonight. I don't know if anyone's shown a British band. Uh, uh, I'm going to grab a... one because they deserve to be talked right. about. I'll be right back. All right, very good. Uh, this is a one-man project out of Yorkshire, Yorkshire in England, and they sound incredibly finished. It's a band called Ofa Wintran. I've talked about them a few times on the channel. Um, they, I really dig this, this band. Um mm. They would not pass a blind taste test if you put them down and, and ask somebody what country they came from, they'd say Finland. This does not sound English or anything else. It just sounds Finnish. Um, this is the demo from 2018. Uh, I think it's just self-titled. It's very raw and it's a little bit lacking, but that that sort of came out on LP later. I hadn't heard the demo until later. What I heard first was this wonderful thing, uh, which is, oh God, Liffa Kosh Hergest. And that's L L Y F R. How am I supposed to pronounce that? I don't know. It sounds Gaelic or something. Um, which translates to the Red Book of Hergest, some kind of book. Apparently, it's red. Uh, this was an absolute instant hit to my uh, to my eardrums when I heard this one uh, back in 2019. Um, icy and repetitive trem riffs. I mean, on the surface, it doesn't sound um, Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. That's it. You get a car. Um... <laughs> Is it a black car? <laughs> black car yeah it's an icy black car um it's mostly blasting but it does that sort of two four beat kind of thing and then like the double kick barrage so it's 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 like all of the the main parts of just that finnish style black metal but he's british miscellaneous screaming vocals I always love that kind of thing it's just all the good stuff and you go oh no not another one but it's the quality of the riffs that Ofa Wintran do I, I find the whole thing very memorable um, an emotive, actually. Uh, it's very easy to remember these riffs. I actually end up humming them. Um, and in 2022, he did a uh, follow up full length. Uh, this one is thankfully much easier to pronounce. Um, this is It Often Befalls Those. Um, came out 2022. Strange as a sound. Yeah, I find the riffs on this one to be even more positive sounding. Uh, we, some, some others were talking about how strange it is to have positive sounding black metal, but I kind of get that in this. It's not blasphemous, satanic black metal riffs. It's almost a little bit to the folky side, so it has a bit of, I don't know, just a bit of life to it. Uh, definitely being a, a story being told that's more than what you get on that cover. I mean, it's a, they're very straightforward covers, right? Um, but, um, yeah, really good. And uh, 
doesn't get the love. They're on um, which one? It's on uh, uh, Death Prayer Records, I think, is the the label, and that's a very small label. They did um, early Lamp of Murmur, um, and then not much else of of note. But um, yeah, really good band. Ofa Wintran, definitely worth checking out. All right, Alan. All right. <clears throat> Speaking of uh, positivity in black metal, and this also dovetails with some comments a few minutes ago where folks were talking about Gilead. Um, in Exorum, now here we're kind of straying towards the death metal line a little bit. Is it melodic death metal? Is it melodic black metal? Is it the two mixed together? It kind of straddles the line. So I'm, I'm going to say it's just barely in balance for our conversation tonight. But uh, regardless, very cool project. I've liked uh, all their albums. I think each album has gotten better than the previous one. And yeah, very catchy songwriting. All the songs you know, have, you know, this very cool vibe of, you know, shit's hard, but we're determined to get through it. So nice. Kind of a, you know, <laughs> the opposite of the depressive suicidal stuff. Um, the depressive suicidal stuff is cool. Like Marty said, I like that from time to time, but I can't listen to it all the time. Yeah. I have to want that particular vibe, but this gives you kind of the opposite vibes, but yeah, excellent songwriting, you know, great riffs, big catchy melodies worked in throughout their stuff. It can't go wrong with any of their three albums really. But again, I think each one, if you're unfamiliar, kind of start with the newest work backwards. You'll hear the best stuff first, in my opinion. So, in Exorum, uh, a cool band from the Gilead catalog. All right. So, Simon mentioned the UK. I got to show this thing. I, I said I wasn't going to do any nepotism, but I think this is my fourth release on Binary Recordings. Um, one of my favorite things I've ever put out. I put out a lot of great stuff that I really love, but uh, Woden's Throne Loss. This is a band I was surfing around on MySpace one night, and this popped up. Uh, they're a demo or something. I listened to it on there. I was blown away. Contacted them. It all kind of come together. This, to me, is English Emperor. This album is amazing. It was reissued on, uh, I don't know. I can't read it. On uh, vinyl, a small run of it, I think. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but we're probably going to be reissuing this this year at some point on vinyl. Uh, U.S. anyway, I, I think Candlelight might have the rights for it in Europe. I have to look at the contract that I signed with them. But anyway, um, this is the CD we put out um, back way back when. Fourth release. It's just some of the most... I get teary-eyed listening to some of this stuff. It is so well-written. They, they took the Emperor their emperor aesthetic they worked in uh an, an english vibe to it it's just it's rainy it's atmospheric it's it's so fucking good this album is so good there the album uh that came after curse is also really good too but uh different vocalist um <laughs> yeah what <laughs> tyler tyler's oh. comment yeah. Anyway, <laughs> check out this Woden's Throne record, their debut loss. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. No, they're not sketch. They're not. They're not. Did anybody know, ever accuse them of being sketch? Yeah, they've been accused. Friends with Winter Felleth. Brassy was in Winter Felleth for a hot minute. Then all that crap came out and he left the band. And there's, they were on, um, there's some other shit. They're just huh. some associations, but they're not. They're awesome dudes good dudes wow. check out Rolling throne they're fucking awesome so good um hopefully this year we'll get to reissue this this slab of amazing but anyway um eric's up some some of those guys have a more recent project from just a year oh, or two yeah nemerous uh yeah. Brassy's not in the band anymore basically the band went on as uh nemerous we put out their ep it's great it sounds a lot like woden's throne and also michael the keyboard player in woden's throne is uh, aham kara which is an, another amazing album we put out that didn't get a lot of traction and actually we're putting out their second record here in a matter of months. So hmm. a lot of cool stuff going on. Thank you for reminding me, Alan. I've had a few white claws. I'm not as, oh, no problem. I could see the Marty, cool you've had white claws. Yeah. I'm on keto. I can't drink the, what I want to drink. Marty, it's not sustainable. Don't do it. 
<laughs> what keto? No. Keto. Moving is sustainable, and I'm you know whatever. Keto is bad for you, man. What's the doctor prescribed? Anyway. Anyway, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go toward work shit. Um, <laughs> so I pulled two because this is the same band, but uh, I can never decide which one I like better. So we've got Colt the Ghoul with uh, fuck, which one is this? I don't know. Can you read that? I can't fucking read that. That's the Henbane, isn't it? Henbane. One? Yeah. Yep. And we have Hexan. I call it the ghoul. Mm-hmm. Polish black metal, just super weird. Um, I don't know. Definitely hear cues from like Master's Hammer, um, Mystifier, um, but like also some Mortuary Drapes, like Echoes on here, but it's also like really original. Like it, it, it don't really sound like anybody that was putting out black metal at the time that they put these records out. And then they got even like more strange. <laughs> by taking like King Diamond uh, cues and whatnot. Um, but these two records specifically are just very eerie. Um, yeah, I don't want to say like disturbing, but like as far as as far as black metal goes, like this is about as like ritualistic and like sincerely kind of like, I don't know, uh, discomforting as, as I feel like you can get, uh, at least for its era. Um, Especially for a band that a band that was signed to like Hell's Headbangers, which is like, honestly like, you know, that's not Midnight or fucking like, fuck, um, you know, Angel Come or whatever the fuck Hell's Headbangers <laughs> is putting out these days. <laughs> Some band with like a stupid name that sounds just like Midnight, basically. That's what I think, of, I think of Hell's Headbangers bands. Anyway. <laughs> They were on Hell's Bangers. I don't know if they still are. I don't know if they're still a band. But these two albums, like from their mid era, because they put up, they've got two albums after this one, um, and they're both very good, um, but less black metal and more almost catering to like traditional metal uh, standards. Um, very much in the Merciful Fate King Diamond category in t- terms of like being like almost like a, a play or like an opera. Um, this shit is awesome. And I don't hear enough people talking about this band these days. Um, really good. Really cool. Really unique. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I can't decide which one's my favorite, so you get to see both of them. And these tapes are also really cool, except for, like, this one's cool, but, like, I mean, you get this weird twine holding it together. How do you and store it's, that? It's very annoying. And then, like, eh, tape comes uh, That's out. frustrating. And you got, like, you know... Cool, like grommets in here, like actual metal grommets, lyrics. It's pretty rad. This packaging, is, yeah, this packaging is also cool, but it comes in a very much more like reasonable plastic case with you know yeah. your cassette, but then it's got like a book that you can actually read the lyrics to instead of something that's printed on something that's almost as dark as what it's printed on. Anyway, that's cool. We metalheads are are such an RC craftsy bunch. It's not even fucking. It's it's embarrassing. (laughs) It's embarrassing. We got to sew our patches onto our jackets. And yeah, here we go. Here we go. TJ, arts and crafts night at the rehearsal space. (laughs) It's true. It's fucking true. Exactly. Tonight we will craft the masks that that, that portray our essence. And now I got to remember how this twine was in here because that's the only way it closes, right? Like, (laughs) yeah, you've stuffed it now. It's fucked. Jam it in a jewel case. Just throw the fucking twine in the garbage and use a piece of tape. <laughs> That'll devalue it. Please, I gotta fucking sell it. This is my nest egg, Marty. Come on. <laughs> Marty, he loses that twine. It's like 40 bucks less on Discogs. So you can just replace that with some dental floss. <laughs> exactly. exactly, Alan. You understand. Thank it you. ain't worth a Imagine fuck unless it. he's willing to sell it. <laughs> the angry buyer on Discogs. Where's my twine? Yeah, this didn't come with the twine. You said it was complete. This isn't the original twine, is it? You replaced the twine, you fuck. Yeah, I did. This I replaced it with you. I replaced it with fucking ripcord because it's easier. <laughs> if you got if you had the diehard edition, it would be like you know, like you know, barbed wire or something. So there you go. These are yeah. dude, these are like surprisingly hard. To, I had to order these directly from the label in Poland, um, and they weren't cheap. Anyway. That doesn't matter. Polish twine. Twine demands it's the music the that matters. It's the music that matters. Shut up. No, it is. It's the twine. It's the fucking <laughs> Joanne the Fabric twine side. that whines. Yeah, the twine that whines. Exactly. <laughs> oh, All right. Nice. Simon, what you um, got? 
Well, for the, firstly, for those wondering, I looked up on the Oracle and there is no band called Angel Come with a space or without, so go for it. You can register that. <laughs> Copyright is how is there not a band called Angel Come? I know, right? How is there not a band called Angel Come? Seriously, come on! It's, what are, you, what are the war Marty, metal you bands asked doing? When, you asked when a project officially starts right now. Yeah. Right now. Oh. Just, um, my solo I'll, I'll project. Do, I'll do oh, yeah, Marty. There you go. <laughs> Glory Stead. Glory Stead side project. Angel, Angel Come. <laughs> That's it. Show's over. We're done. Um, you, you and TJ can start recording this weekend. <laughs> We're coming everywhere as our first demo. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. Um, following the angel come. I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that. This, this is a really good I think you can follow that, Simon. You pretty much shot your load on that one. <laughs> oh. Oh. I was weeping angel's tears. Not those tears. Um, just call it a night. We're done. So this is a band that I don't think uh, I've ever heard anyone uh, speak about, at least in the VC, but um, they're not that obscure. band called uh, Void Omnia, um, with a really cool logo, a really cool cover. Uh, band, a California band, uh, around from 2013 to 2019. Uh, they called it a day a few years ago. Uh, they released a really solid discography. I enjoy everything. Um, I've got it all. They play very much in that Ungwa style, um, so... You kind of know what you're getting, very melodic, riffy black metal. And, um, yeah, so this is the – technically this is the demo from 2014, self-titled, very cool art on that one. Uh, this is the only full length they did. It's called Dying Light from 2016, exploding universe artwork. That's really good. That's probably the best thing they did. They really put all the work into the – into the full length. And they did a couple of splits. Uh, this one is from 2018 uh, with a band called Eisen, Eisen Ordal, which is a bit more of a Black Doom band. It's a strange um, mix when you go between the two bands, but they're really good. So that was enjoyable to hear the other band. Uh, and this one, which is uh, the um, last thing they do, which is a split with Insanity Cult, who's a Greek black metal band. So um, that's everything this band did. But uh, yeah, the full length. Um, Dying Light. That's the that's definitely the one to check out. Same on Vendetta Records. Um, just relentless. They got two guitarists. It's a five piece band. Uh, so two guitarists and bass. It's very full sounding. Um, really, really good. I mean, I, I can't see anyone that likes exercises in uh, futility not liking this stuff. Uh, the bassist is now in Ulthar. Uh So you know they he's carried the cosmic stuff into death metal. Um, so yeah, Void Omnia definitely worth checking them out. Um, but yeah, start with this album. I think very cheap too. I got um, I got this EP from um, one of those random websites called Rare Waves. You see them pop up on eBay and stuff. Yeah, like I buy from like, them all the time on eBay. Well, it's like fifteen Australian dollars delivered to my door from the UK. It was like okay, can't even buy a digital download for that. So yeah, good Void Omnia. Right on. Check them out. Alan. Simon, how much does it cost to ship a digital download to Australia? <laughs> 50 Surprisingly <laughs> expensive. Surprisingly <laughs> expensive. It's the cost of electricity along the wire. Mm. Well, you know, when you the generate, electricity also, flows backwards there. It, it's spinning backwards in the generators. You know, that's, you know, it's the Coriolis kind of effect. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, that's the a special order effect. part right there. Not the areolas. The, Jesus what the hell's Christ. areolas effect? <laughs> That's it's it. not the area. Done. Done. <laughs> That's Anyways, sorry. Uh, mm. We we are a serious band. This is a serious topic. <laughs> to Angel Come. Very, Angel Very Come. <clears throat> Don't forget. Never forget. The, the Sex Condor finally has a band to call its own. That's all I can, can uh, say about that. Anyway, up next. Um, yeah, Ben, we should have brought up earlier than this, it feels like, uh, Nachachwan. Obviously, uh, you know, very cool and working on sort of, you know, you know, the Native American, you know, black metal, which, you know, has sort of become its own subgenre in more recent years. Nachachwan's been doing it for a long time and doing it very, very good. Uh, you know, we've had, you know, you know, both the guys on the show in the past. Very nice guys, you know, very, you know, knowledgeable on the subject matter. 
Um, and yeah, they do a great job, you know, sort of, you know, working in, you know, the historical references, you know, with the music, uh, you know, and, you know, seriously, you know, diving into and, you know, researching, you know, these topics and stories, you know, not just, you know, kind of, you know, doing a cheap pantomime of it or saying they're into it, you know, and having just, you know, one or two flourishes, you know, no, you know, really, you know, spend years, you know, uh, researching it you know and knowing this stuff inside and out and one thing that maybe while it's awesome they do that it may hurt them just a little bit because you know it's taken them a while between releases at times because you know they're busy with other things and you know, of course you know uh, you know andrews you know, kagan has got iron flame going on and stuff too but um yeah so it's almost like you know they were doing some stuff in this genre and while they were working on the next part, all of a sudden other bands started getting the credit for this genre. And you know, yeah, it's a little bit of a shame. Uh, hopefully, you know, they will you know continue to you know get more recognition for you know their contributions you know to this you know particular niche in black metal. But yeah, the, the music's very good, very well put together, uh, very nice instrumentation. And it's not like they're doing anything you like really in your face with it they're not you know beating you over the head with you know, some obtuse instrument that you've never heard of or anything it's just all worked together and blended really really nicely into a strong set of songs every time so yeah if somehow you have missed nichachwan and you like you know other you know american black metal bands that are you know really working on american themes nichachwan's definitely one to check out soon great band good dudes great band amazing one of the best bands they're so good they're so there's so much mm -hmm. talent in those two guys it's it's yeah, absolutely yeah. it's absolutely amazing it's yeah. inspiring I, yeah i mean you really it's one of those bands you really do feel like you know if they if they had the ability you know to really you know get out to play a lot more or just record more frequently they would probably you know start to, they'd almost have to you know attract a lot more eyeballs that, that's the only reason i can think of that you know they don't get more attention is that <laughs> sightings and stuff are you know just infrequent enough that they continue to slip under the radar which is a shame yeah but we get it yeah if people are busy and have other things going on it's you know, it's not their only project or their only you know <laughs> means of uh supporting themselves yep uh samantha i've got copies it was just reissued by nordvis productions i've got copies of it through the bindroon website shop.bindroonrecordings.com or go to um the chachwin's bandcamp page they've got copies too so yep all right for me let's go to the album i've talked a lot about this last year and that is ruim um black royal spiritism basically kind of a cheat because you know this guy was a member runa erickson blasphemer was a member of mayhem he was the replacement for Eronimus after he was killed and um this album, album sounds like the best mayhem record that mayhem never recorded as far as i'm concerned i love this record i love the fact that runa's vocal or vocals his uh well he's got good vocals too he does the vocals on this he plays bass and guitar on here they got another drummer helping him out but um he's got such an organic but obtuse riff writing style he just it sounds like no one else but it's somehow he makes it melodic and uh, memorable and crafts these songs into ways that are exciting, varying dynamics, um, yet maintaining his really avant-garde guitar playing style. Um, I love this record. I think it's great. I think it's great. It's better than it's better than any of the mayhem shit he was on. Although I do like Ordo Ed Ko, I do like Wolf Slayer Abyss. I do like a Grand Declaration of War. That album, I hated it when it came out. But I ended up a decade later listening to it again and went, oh, I get it now. I get it. That's a that's a, a forward thinking album for sure. But this here, there's not a lot of stuff like that. It's more in the uh, like a follow up to Ordo Ed Kale, but with a better production. And I love it. I think it's great. I know, Simon, you're on board with me on this one for sure. But um, awesome yeah, that album. Album rules. I hope I hope this is a project that continues on. I know he's. Uh, Runa is also involved in Ultimus or Ultimus with David Vincent, which I'm also going to yeah, be that reviewing. That I'm going to be reviewing on this channel eventually, <laughs> but um, yeah, awesome. Check that out Ruim. 
that ruin made me go back and um, revisit the Chimera album. It's and good. I like that a lot more. A lot more. Yeah. Than yeah. Me too. It's a good album. Yep. Really grew on me that. All right, Eric. Okay. You're muted. There you go. Uh, no, I'm not. No, you weren't. I, am, I saw I your mouth not, moving, but nothing was I, happening. Because I was going. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm scared. Commodus. I don't know if it's been mentioned already, but I pulled this. And uh, so you get to look at it. This record's awesome. And it's probably my favorite of his. I really liked the record he put out last year, um, but I think this is better. Uh, in terms of <laughs> look at that band photo, <laughs> this is so good. Is I like printed, I printed Comodus uh, records for um, Craig, uh, Craig, Craig Legace. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I that record, that that particular record, is really hard to fucking come come by these days. Um, I bet it is. So is this one, but this record, it's stellar. Uh, Double LP put out by what? Uh, Go to War Axe, I think. Um, but this this record is just, I don't know, man, like. It's hard for me to describe this band, and and they kind of floated across my radar because I blind bought that split with um, Pan American Native Front, just based off of stuff that I'd, I'd heard about both bands, um, and that record really kind of like ignited, reignited to a certain degree my interest in uh, modern black metal last year, if I'm honest. Um, That's good. And um, I don't know, there's just something really, really rad and like unique about this record specifically like the, his side of the split with pan american native front is, is super good as well and like i said the the full length from last year is also really great um but in terms of what i i kind of want to hear uh from him this is this is really all encompassing um just super it's it's low five but like you can hear everything um and it sounds very full um it, so, it sounds, it's one guy, but it sounds like a full band. If I'm, it doesn't sound like nothing, nothing sounds simulated on this record. Like the drums sound acoustic, you know, nothing sounds programmed. Um, it sounds very raw, very, very, uh, what's the word? Acoustic, if you will, in terms of just like the way that the instruments were recorded. Um, I don't know. It's, it's like I said, it's, it's hard for me to really describe kind of the vibes that i get from this i get like a cold vibe but at the same time a bit of a warm vibe it's weird um i just really like it uh again it's 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 he's an artist that kind of just helped reignite my interest in in black metal that came came out post like 2010 um and for that like i i hold this in really high regard um i'd say if you're going to check out one um commodus record this would be the record that i would say you should check out uh the full length that came out before this is that a full no, it was an ep that um i can't think of the name of it it's the one marty was talking about just now um that's a really great one as well um the new one's a little bit more involved i want to say maybe a little bit more complex um this is like a really happy medium and really good cool i ask our um El elmart yeah, that's that's album art courtesy uh, Jeff Whitehead from Leviathan. Um, right on. All right. Yeah. All right. It's amazing. Ow. That's a Jeff Whitehead piece. It doesn't look like a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> evil ah! Pokemon. <laughs> Lightning Tail. Nah. I choose you. <laughs> um, I choose you, Flayer of Souls. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to show Angel come. No, I, I'm kidding. Because we haven't we haven't recorded our album yet. We have to record. Damn it, it Simon! I thought you were actually yeah. going to show an Angel come. <laughs> I can't believe that yeah. name hasn't been taken. To be completely fucking honest, it's crazy. I didn't try it with a K. Maybe there's Angel come with a K. Maybe. Somebody will go check me on that one. But um, K V M. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's what, that's what I want in my browser history. You know, five different <laughs> ways of trying to spell angel come. <laughs> How to get? Angel did you? Come did you mean angel? Ah, <laughs> oh, so dumb. Um, tangentially related because of the Goto RX uh, association. Um, I've band that I've raved on about in pretty much any black metal update video I did 
particularly 2021, 20, the guy just kept dropping new EPs and albums until I had a massive collection of them. Um, it's a band uh, called Ifanak, and I picked two. Um, I love the cover on this one, particularly. That yeah, was cool. Bloody, bloody hard to get that one, that one I had to trade for. Um, incredibly hard to get. But um, this is one of those, again, those handful of sort of First Nation-themed black metal bands uh, like Pan American Native Front that I mentioned. Uh, Ifanak also throws in a bit of an Irish heritage uh, into the mix as well as the Native <laughs> Canadian. Uh, <laughs> Melanie loves Angel Pan. <laughs> it's got a ring to it. <laughs> You're not going to get a job that way. No, I told her. I told her in interviews. TV? I told her on her interviews to put on her uh, her cleanest uh, devourment shirt, so they knew that she was serious. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, back to the angel comp. Um, right. So, the th what's really interesting with Ifanak is you can pick up any album or EP, and it's mis unmistakably sound like him. It's a one-man guy, one-man project, um, but they're always very different. Uh, you don't know if you're going to get a straight-up kind of black metal thing, a more atmospheric one, very punky thing. There's an album of Sam Hain covers. It, it's it's all over the map. Um, so the two I'm showing here, this is um, Skin, Stone, Blood, Bone, and I love that cover. I love the Blurred logo. I don't know why he did it, but I think it looks really cool. Um, let me go there on the back. It has that OB strip thing that uh, they like to do at GoToRx. And uh, this one, which is uh, was also difficult to get, but I think it's been reissued now. Um, this is uh, green the, the Green Enchanted Forest of the Druid Wizard, which does not sound like, you know, First Nations Canadian black metal. It sounds more like a Dungeons & Dragons book, but kind of shows you the differing things you get from this band. Um, this one is very raw. This one's from 2019, um, quite lo-fi, probably his most lo-fi, um, but has tr very triumphant sounding drumming, has native instruments in there. There's a flute on the last track, which is quite ambient. Um, and the vocals are just savage, absolutely. Like he hates everything on this album. Uh, I think the best word to describe this one is feral. So that's the feral album. Uh, and then in one year later, 2020, and this is where I jumped on board. I think I just saw it on a GoToWareX drop and went, that looks interesting. Listened to a track and went, well, I guess I'm aboard that train. Uh, yeah, the Green Enchanted Forest of the Druid Wizards, stupid thing. Anyway, the riffs on this, uh, it, this is way more like Philosophem. The opening track sounds like it came off Philosophem. Um, it's got also the heaviest and cleanest production of any of the albums he's done. Uh, lots of ambient sections in it. This feels more like something D from Woods of Desolation would do, like his Remet or Forest Mysticism projects, very much this. Um, and it has, again, that sort of positive sunshine through the tree moments. You know, we were talking about positive black metal. The later part of this album starts to get that way. It, it may as well be different bands. Like, he's just all over the shop. Um, this, this is more raw than the demo. Well, the demo is quite clean. Um, but uh, he's still unmistakable, though, is the vocals between them. And then he does drop into that sort of punky black metal beat. It will just come in there and, yeah, remind you of what the core of Ifanak is. Um, and I like everything he's done, even that Sam Hain covers. I don't even know anything about Sam Hain. Uh, but the covers album was good. It's got a pumpkin on it. Um, so, yeah, good band, Ifanak. Definitely worth checking out. Check anything out from them. It's going to be different to the other album you check out that's for sure all right alan hmm. i'll right back all right <clears throat> next one here going back and forth between cds and band camp tonight um band out of chicago called vukari uh this is i think their first full length matriarch I've seen it with slightly different artwork, so I'm guessing it's been reissued from time to time. Vukari falls in that category I mentioned earlier where, you know, they create you know, this very cool overall atmospheric kind of sound, but the songs individually don't really tend to stand out or stick with you all that long. You know, listening to them, you know, they craft really cool music, enjoy listening to them. The next day, you cannot <laughs> sing along to these or remember any particular 
parts that stand out really well but you just remember that you know overall you know it's very you know tight coherent makes you for a good listening experience so yeah it's you know a little different you know, vein of black metal it's the kind of band i like but i will sometimes forget about them because yeah you have to be in the mood for that particular kind of ambiance to want to listen to their stuff but they've done three albums all three of them have been very solid um they again even this one on the debut it seems like they kind of came together fully formed they already knew exactly what they wanted to sound like uh, they already kind of knew how to build these structures to get the overall sound uh and the other albums have you know kind of followed course so it's an interesting style there's some other bands that you know i have this same kind of relationship with where i, I really enjoy their music just not on a song to song kind of basis you know they just you know create a good soundscape overall so yeah chicago's vukari definitely fits the bill for that um might show some other bands in this vein too we'll see how much longer we still go but uh vukari is kind of a neat one i hadn't thought of them in a long time and looking at bands this week so yeah i haven't talked about them in forever time to give them a shout out yeah we put out their second album I was thinking that, that one was on uh, Bion Dream. Uh, yeah. Yep, Mike, you dig them too? Very cool. All right, I am up next. Um, pick out a newish band. I don't. I think this is the only thing they've released thus far. Um, it's the guy from uh, Bekek, Iraq. Is that how you say it? I don't know. The, I think the, you got that seriously. That sounds right, yes. This is Feldham. Um, it is basically the Bakekarak stuff is the guy's Burzum project. This is his Dark Throne project. This is actually a full mm -hmm. wait. Yeah, there's three dudes in this band where the other one is just him. This one has three guys in the project. It's a uh, Ukrainian black metal. I don't think he lives in Ukraine anymore. He might. I don't know. It would be a. He moved. One. Um, he moved during all the problems. I think he's in maybe like Netherlands or something. It could be, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is, is it super groundbreaking? It is, and it's Dark Throne Worship. It's well done. It's an EP. It comes with an enormous poster. This guy seems That's to be, beautiful. I know he just did like a, a hip hop type video thing, which is ridiculous, but um, um, I don't know if he's just taking a piss on that or what, but this is good. The solid stuff. He covers both styles fairly well. The Vakek, the Rack stuff is kind of, a little too romantic flowery i've got two of the records i don't know if he's got more than that it's good i just there's things about it i really like there's things about it that are a little like oh, i don't know but um this is pretty much straight up dark throne worship so you're not getting any flowery romanticism or cure inspired stuff on this one it's just pretty much sticking to the tired and true second wave norwegian black metal um minimalism on this one so yeah good stuff four tracks uh out of season has copies i think i've got a couple left in the distro good stuff i dig it eric so uh i love this record um god when did this come out 2016 i think i want to say um released on cassette by vendetta and that's what i'm going to show um everything i think vendetta releases is generally actively anti-fascist or red um in terms of political leanings uh this is antlers with uh a gaze into the abyss uh special edition cassette uh mine is numbered 303 of 333 um, and I know Van did the reissue on vinyl for these guys, and certainly anything that Van puts out is, is going to be quality. This is a super atmospheric, super raw, super pagan black metal with an anti-fascist lean. And if that's not your thing, fine, cool, don't cry about it. Um, really, really good. If you like the better eras of Wolves in the Throne Room, this is kind of along those lines. Um, I just really like this album. It's super, it's not as polished as Wolves in the Throne Room are these days um, or have ever been really. Cause one of the things that um, 
is true for Wolves in the Throne Room is that regardless of how raw they've ever played, they've always had really, really, really clean recordings. And that is my opinion, but I think it's I think it's correct. Um, this is a very muddy uh, recording, but it sounds fucking great. And it's very uh, atmospheric. It plays with ambience really well. Um, but the rawness is is heavy and thick uh, and palpable. Um, and when I say thick, I mean there's bottom end to this recording. And uh, it, it really benefits from that bottom end. Um, very, very pained, very just like feral and, and vicious when it's kind of off the rails. Um, and then they rein it back and kind of dial it in to a more controlled sort of... Um, atmospheric tune and it still works really well um and it's just really good really good they put out a second album after this and as far as i know are now defunct um after two records but they're both stellar and this is the first one it's really fucking good i can't recommend it enough especially if you um want something that is decidedly not sketchy this shit is fucking awesome Antlers. Right. Also, really, really nice packaging. Look at that fucking spot gloss on that. Dude, there's no fucking twine. How dedicated are they to their art? <laughs> no twine, but it has an OB, you shit. <laughs> if they're called antlers, they need the twine needs to be made out of like actually like, you know, marrow or sinew or um, something. For your information, it might not have that, but on the side of the OB, there is an antler. There's a lock Ooh. of pubic hair. There's a lock. <laughs> Shaped into a, a miniature antler. There is blood-stained burlap. <laughs> Looking forward There's on this cog. Sold. <laughs> anyway, this is, really good, this is a really good. This is a really good record. And if like you like that, like Agalock sort of sound, or Wolves in the Throne Room sort of sound, or like Galibrade sort of sound, but a lot rawer and a lot thicker, this is gonna really hit the spot for you. The logo even right. reminds me of Agalock. Mm-hmm. It's just really good. Agalock theme to it. Really freaking good, cool. man. Freaking good. Yeah. All right. I recommend it. Um, I added two more to my list because we were still going. Um, so this is my last two. Um, and one I've talked about, I think, in my year end list. And uh, I was expecting somebody to show Ara. Uh, and I expected that person to be Alan. And he I did own not. Zero Ara. No. no. You, you know them not. better than I. So, yeah. I know, but the logo was in the thing, so I presume that meant anyway. Doesn't matter. Um, but they have a sister project, and that is Taubra, T A U B R A. But I believe the B is a fancy B with a little thing on it. So fucking, I don't know, Europeans. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> whatever. It's just you know, we're back to this again. Okay. I love that Tor, you have that printed uh, out so you can refer to yep. it. I had to print it out, so I, I, I can't say it. Anyway, um, so <laughs> this is the debut release. This is the first release from, essentially, this is like two members of ARA, uh, so they're a Swiss band, doing, uh, with a new bassist and a new vocalist, doing a bit more of a direct approach black metal than ARA. So ARA's um, got a lot of uh, sort of ebbs and flows, like it goes really fast and then hits sort of, I, don't, I hate to use the word breakdown, but they do that kind of thing and then, you know, Alan knows what I'm talking about. They they they're very circular in how they play their songs, and the mm-hmm. and the vocals are like banshee screams. That's not the case with Torbra. Torbra is a bit more traditional, uh, and a lower pitch register in the vocals as well. Um, has more of a riff focus and has slower groove kind of sections in it. Uh, it still mainly kicks around that sort of blinding speed. Has a very very good crisp production, but oh Jesus, Melanie! <laughs> <laughs> Melanie's obsessed. Is, do you have to say that as coom? Is, is it like a, a, angle coom? I'm pretty sure it's a th. There should be an umlaut <laughs> over that u, not, a freaking, end, not a freaking asterisk. We need a, th- a thorn in there somewhere. Or a, um, whatever the shit that is. So derailed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the vocalist on this one is the guy from uh, Il Halung, which is a band I've heard of but not actually heard. Um, sounds a bit more like a deeper Marduk Mortis kind of thing. Um, so obviously there's similarities to Ara, but it does sort of stand alone. Uh, the, the music is written by the same guitarist and drummer, so it's pretty going to be, you know, Swiss black metal from the Ara sound. But, um, yeah, it's really, really good. Uh, the, the riffs do build up to, like, a high crescendo. So I really 
like how this thing's presented too. Not much going on inside, unfortunately, but it's a nice gatefold. Dig that cover. The logo's good. Um, so basically, bottom line, if you like Ara, but you wish that the vocals were a bit more digestible and it was a little bit more straightforward and a little bit less chaotic, check out Torbro. That's good stuff. All right. <clears throat> Alan. All right. <clears throat> I almost forgot about this one, but they just released something. So uh, let's bring up Obsidian Tongue. Um, band up, you know, in the Portland area. It, to me, a little bit like Vukari, just in the sense of, you know, really well-crafted music. Song to song, it doesn't always stand out uh, and stick with me for a long time. But, you know, I definitely like what they put together in terms of like a listening all the way through the album as an experience. You know, good atmospheric black metal. And, yeah, they just had an EP drop called the Stone Heart EP. Um, bought it, uh, had it pre-ordered on Bandcamp. So I just went ahead and, uh, yep, got this a couple of days ago. First impression is that it's, it's very good. If you liked their last full-length album, Volume 3, you should like the material on here as well. So yeah, something you know, literally brand new, hot off the presses, so to speak, that you can go pick up if you're into that style of black metal. Don't know what their plans are moving forward, if they're building up to an album, or if this is really kind of a stopgap thing to fill in for a while. But again, yeah, put together very good songs, really like their lyrics. They do a very good job writing that. Granted, you can't understand them unless you sit, you know, and follow right along with it. But yeah, you know, they put a lot of work into the lyrics and stuff. So cool project, good atmospheres, and a new EP that you can check out over on Bandcamp. Obsidian Tongue. All right. I'm going to end. This is my last one. Um, you got a few more, Eric. That's cool. Roll through those. Um, I Don't tell me what to do, Martin. <laughs> yeah, I reviewed this earlier or later in the year on uh, Heavy Metallurgy. The new Valdrin album, Throne of the Lunar Soul. You know what? I was like randomly digging, clicking through promos, trying to figure out something to cover. And this thing instantly perked up my ears and rolls i'm glad yeah i'm glad if i had one complaint about this there's one or two tracks too long but it is too long it's, it's, too, it, it's still really good it's really really good record i initially my first impression was demi borger but that didn't end up being uh entirely true it just has that that vibe that early demi vibe which is cool like storm blast and for all tid but um they're from ohio the synth on here is a guitar synth i've learned which pretty interesting very cool very well written album and i'm not gonna like go a keytar no it's not a keytar it's like it's a little a device that hooks up by the pickup and it converts <laughs> the notes to synth it's 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 cool um but yeah, these guys are really good. They have their own little fan, uh, fantastical story they've written that's been a concept that's gone for four albums now. And um, it's really and solid, well-written U.S. black metal. And um, they definitely need a little bit more exposure for sure. Good band, Veldrin. V-A-L-D-R-I-N. Mantastical. It's Man no Angel Come, but they can try. You know, nobody is Angel Come. Not even <laughs> Angel Come is Angel Come. Nope. <laughs> All right. They, they were definitely better before they came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they were too tense, Alan. I don't know. I think that that gave it the kind of raw, edgy vibe. You know, <laughs> af afterwards they're just too mellow. You know, the, the edge was gone. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. I have a few more, but I don't need to talk about them. Some of them are kind of unexceptional. Well, there's this the scallop braid this just got reissued last year um by this is northern silence i think did this tape um probably yeah i missed out on the lp years back um, but this is a cool tape it's got like the cover art printed on it which is ah, fancy wild. yeah um really stellar came with a fucking i got number 92 of 100 oh look at that anyway um it's a good record i really like it it's uh definitely a favorite i listen to it at the gym a lot 
Um, but I thought, wow, you know, nobody's really talked about anything Greek yet, right? So check this out. Uh, we got Cult of Abon, which uh, for my money is probably the best current Greek black metal band right now playing that ancient Greek style along with this is their split with, um, oh God. Uh, Kaiser, it's Sadie's Cruenta, or I don't know. Bless you. That, that first word, it's like Sadie's Sadie's Cru, Cruenta, or something like that. They're actually anyway, a good band. Yeah, no, they are. Their their side's really fucking good, and they have a couple full lengths that are also really stellar. But I don't think yeah. they touch uh, Cult of Avon. But like, you, know, you got the c classic Greek black metal cover art from um, this is Panos. Uh, I can't think of his name, but he did all the like. Verathron and fucking early Rotting Christ and Necromantia covers um, on both sides of this. Um, stellar, stellar stuff. And then of course you have their most recent output. They have like a, they have two full lengths, and then they have this, which is a split with uh, ceremonial to torture out of Finland. Um, first of all, look at that fucking cover. Oh my god, it's so good. That's um, pretty good, yeah. Again, cover art by that same guy, Panos. Um, can't think of his last name, but his first name is definitely Panos. This is on Iron Bonehead. Uh, it's listed as a 2023 release, but I'm pretty sure it came out in 2022. I think this is just a reissue. Um, Cult of Abon, super in that fucking Verithron, uh, His Majesty at the Swamp, Walpurgis Noct era uh, vein. Uh, same as like Thy Mighty Contract and freaking Triarchy era uh, Rotting Christ. Um probably some nods to like that really early necromantia the split with verathron would probably ring true as well as um god damn it i can never remember the actual cr crossing the fiery path um and the second uh, necromantia stellar shit on their own but um i don't know the, it's not original uh, but it's super sincere um i wouldn't say i would you could call it derivative, I guess, but I wouldn't call it derivative more as just like a really sincere, really like, it's an homage with like a lot of oomph behind it. Like you can tell that they're really putting their, their selves into what they're doing, even though they're, they're just copying that sound from the, from the early to mid nineties from Greece. Um, ceremonial torture. Uh, I don't know if they have anything other than this, their side on the split. They're from Finland. Um, they don't sound Finnish, like in that Horna, Sargeist, uh, Behexen sort of vein. Um, more along the lines of like the more mystical uh, Mediterranean sort of sound, like uh, Greek Greek sounds, of course. They also kind of emulate a little bit of that Mortuary Drape sound, like the early Mortuary Drape, Secret Sudaria, All the Witches Dance. Um, and you can hear elements of some of the Brazilian stuff, like the more esoteric Mystifier or... Um, uh, uh impurity uh type stuff um really melodic but also really raw and really feral and esoteric as i said um really really good shit um awesome split cult of avon uh, i didn't pull any of their full lengths just because these uh splits i actually prefer to their standalone full lengths but really really good cool cool band and I'd like to see more of them. Same time, another band that I would have pulled, but they're kind of just faded into obscurity. And they were doing this around the same time as Cult of Avon got started was a band called Ithaca out of Greece, which I think actually had somebody that was involved with Necromantia doing um, some part in the band. They put out uh, a couple seven inches and then a compilation 12 inch with just the seven inch um, material on it. Uh, really good stuff too. All right. Simon, are you, where are you at? I got my last one. Uh, right but on. just on that on that Greek black metal, um the uh band that like the modern style band that does it for me the most is a funeral storm. If you don't know them, Eric, check them out. They're really good. Will do. I will. They have a good full length. Um and I reckon the, I think you kind of nailed it with that description of the the the, the modern Greek black black metal bands like I don't, I mean, homage is, yeah, that's that's pretty much right. I actually feel that a lot of them are more of a continuation. They just yeah. pick up where everyone else left off. Other, like, you can you can have a Finnish black metal band now and just, oh, it sounds like an old one or something. But 
the Greek ones sound like they're literally just picking it up and continuing on. It's not a reboot. It's not an emulation. They're just another, just carrying it forward. I don't know. Seems I would agree with that. Very honest about that sound. Mm -hmm. um, so last one. <clears throat> yeah, sincere. Absolutely. That's a good word for it. Last one from me. Uh, I've shown this on my channel. This is heinous. Heinous man, heinous dude. Um, <laughs> ritual, blood, and mysterious dawn. I mean, look at that cover. Ah, oh, so good. Uh, this is the first album from this band. They are a Belgium band, uh, and that is there. I think it's him. Uh, the former enthroned vocalist Lord Sabaton is in this band. Um, so this is very much a 90s black metal attack. It goes from finish scene stuff, the Behex, and like we were talking about, uh, to just a blaze in a northern sky, very necro sounding. The first couple of Satyricon albums, but it's bathed in this occult candelabras, like Mare Ebony Tower. Going back to that again, uh, I get a lot of feeling from that Ebony Tower in this heinous, but this is just uh, just a bit more savage and ripping. Um, it's a six-piece, which is a lot of members for a band. Um, and uh, twin guitars, dedicated keyboardist. Uh, vocally is the real difference. It's like a booming, shouting, massively reverbed vocals on this, like somebody yelling in a metal world room. It's quite unique. Um, the keyboards in this, kind of very subtle, uh, adding a bit of a shine to it. Um, when all the guitars and instrumentation pours, the keyboards come out on their own. Um, it sounds really good. The twin guitars work really well. They bounce off each other. Um, usually it's sort of like a one's doing a, a savage kind of really fast tremolo rhythm, and then there's a higher pitch lead. Uh, so sort of accompaniment at the same time is really good. So it's, it's definitely not just raw black metal. It's very well polished, and that ebony tower kind of occult candelabra black metal hooded kind of thing really comes through so yeah i think this is worth checking out for a lot of people i mean look at that so you need a gatefold for the bloody count of the members so many people it's like earth, it's like earth wind and fire of black metal yeah pretty <laughs> much six people anymore and it's slipknot you got somebody on the bongos anyway <laughs> out on uh, new era there you go penis yeah. very glossy um, Do you need stuff, that many man. people to make black metal? Really? Really? Not really. I mean, you're a dedicated keyboardist. I mean, so it's a top hat band, right? There yeah. you go. Fuck yeah. Good stuff. Top hat. top hat metal is the best. Need more top hat. Alan, what you got? I, we're, we're good to stop right there. Let's let Simon have the last word tonight. Right on. Woo! <laughs> right on. Well, everybody, um, good show, Eric. Great, great topic. It's not one that's covered often and um it deserves a little love we could have probably went a lot deeper if we started doing some real series digging but, oh yeah i still um, got a st I, I still have a stack i did not uh show but it's you want to run through a couple because you are late to the party run through five or uh, so uh no i just have up two here that are within the easy reach um at the bar guest split with false which i think is kind of at that key time when like american black metal was starting to blow up again um, really good split. False, really great band on their own. Vargas, really good band on their own. Totally different styles too, which is so it's cool that they did a split together. And then we have this weird fucking, is it black metal? Is it just weird black Voivod worship? Uh, Chthonic Cervix, which I thought was a very <laughs> unique record when it came out. Um, released by Iron Bonehead around 2014 or 2015, I want to say. Uh, this is an EP or demo. I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. Um, really stellar, cool shit. It's like I said. It's it's like Voivod. If Voivod were black metal and weirder, almost a little try hard, but still really good in its execution. That's it. That's all I got. Right on. Okay. Anybody have anything, Eric? You got anything coming up on High Defamation TV? Do I have anything coming? Yeah, I have a few ideas. I just need to actually have time to like sit down and and you know do them. And right now it's like the like I'm kind of on this upward momentum at work where I just you know just started working again back in December. So it's kind of getting back into that momentum. So it's kind of thrown me off a little bit in terms of regularity on the channel. Um, but I have a few things that will be up and coming. I'm going to do a deep dive 
for the band Sudoku, um, which I mentioned a little bit earlier because I think they're really unique and really awesome. And I happen to own everything that they put out except for, I think, a demo um, that I'm pretty sure like only five other people might have anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, that's that's about all I have like seriously planned. But I have a few other like kind of ideas that are floating around. That hopefully within the next few weeks, you'll see some activity. All right. What about you, Simon? What you got coming up on Explosive Action? Yeah, you know, I, I, I've got a bunch in my head, but nothing filmed. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what the next thing is. I have a massive. Alan, I'll be right things. back. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Can you cover this for a sec? Sorry. No, you're right. Someone's here at the door. Sorry. <laughs> massive pile of records to, to get through in various genres. I, I need to do a black metal themed update at some point. I've managed to acquire like a a dozen sort of 80s original press stuff. Uh, I've got another one coming in the mail. Um, I've, I've had a bit of good, bit of a good run like lo uh, locally, getting in some uh, early press stuff. And I know people like seeing the 80s stuff, so be a thrash attack coming up. Um, and I've been on a bit of a on the movie side of things, um, really enjoying crappy early 2000s shot on video horror films, okay. just shockingly bad stuff. And I did a video <laughs> on some that i picked up and i've managed to pick up enough more to do another video so so did you happen. grab that shitty fucking lichen colony dv blu-ray from uh visual vengeance no that one is probably no. one i need to get yeah you should probably it get, that like one I need to get it's horrible i've been awesome i've been digging really really low and like getting the brain damage films from like 2003 that's about as low as you can get um but i've been having a lot of fun fun watching those and um, do another video on them and I owe a video to um, Metallurgy. I need to do a review for the Unesprichlich and Colton, but I have not got my shit together. So um, I need to get that across in a week or so. So, yeah, lots of things in the pipeline, but I haven't actually filmed them yet. Oh, very cool. <clears throat> how, how do you say that Chilean band again, Simon? Unesprichlich and Colton? I, that's, that, that's it. That's how I've landed on it. Unesprichlich and Colton. Unesprichlich and Colton. Okay. It's straight I'm, I'm, out of... Love it's a Chilean band that. with a German name. That's so weird, right? And, and it's a misprint, and apparently it's a mistranslated one too. Right? It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't supposed. I, to be I know it's that way to begin with. I think it's the name of a of a, a non-existent book within it's, Lovecraft. Yeah, it's one of those uh, Lovecraft books that didn't exist, but Lovecraft yeah. botched the translation. That band is really good, though. The band is yeah, yeah. The, I've been the new one is amazing. Listening to the promo that. Uh, of the one Simon yeah, so. review and it's yeah yeah really really I, good. <laughs> they just keep getting better and better. Like if I go back to their first couple of albums, it's chalk and cheese. Like they, they were very dry. <sighs> that's my favorite right there. That is yeah, and that's the one I've got on CD because there is no LP anymore. That's very hard to get that. Well, I have it. <laughs> well, you can just post it to me. Well, hopefully, they repress that. But the new the one. The likelihood of me sending anything to Australia anytime soon is. Just, it's just not cheap. It's pretty it's slim. Not cheap. Just gonna say, pretty slim. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But uh, Alan, what about you? What yeah. you got coming up? Uh, it's still kind of digging out from the bookshelf. To be honest, I've been uh, had several videos lately on uh, just a lot of books that came out. In I did a lot of reading over the holidays, so splicing those in. But uh, this coming Tuesday, we're going to be checking out some Zotrope. Oh, there you go. Uh, show notes from this this uh, perspective. Monday, I hope to have my review up for the new Dark Space. Um, awesome. Wednesday, Kellen and Jim will not be attending. It'll be myself, TJ, Roger Chorvik from Norway, and Melanie Loves Death Metal on covering Therion's um, Symphony Masses, Hodrak, and Homegas. That's the so third, that's the the third one, right? The third one? Yep. That's the okay. third one. That was okay. It's not terrible. And then it's okay. It's okay. It's better than I thought. It, I, I used to hate it, but I've been putting on this week. I'm like, oh, this is better than I remember it. So I don't know. And um, Friday, I think King Folly is coming back. Is that the, the right date, Alan? Yes. I... That's where we have uh, King penciled in. Is... Yes, that'd be next Friday, the 16th. Right on. Yep. I think we're covering year this year in metal 1988 with king good year 80, 87 or 88 i can't remember 
Yeah. Pretty sure it's 88, but yeah. Um, yeah you're right. You're we'll we'll right. be doing a, this year in metal uh, with uh, King Valley next Friday. 1988 so. is the year that the Gathicles released their Kabbalistic Gnosticism demo, which is crazy to think about. I think that predates Napalm Death. Yeah. I didn't realize about that coming on that early. Yeah. Agathocles formed in like 84, 85. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, always thought they were a 90s band. Well, um, also, I want to thank everybody in the community. We have the best communities on the internet. Uh, we, You guys uh, generate over 300 bucks for Melanie and her family. That's fucking awesome, man. Let's be honest. Yep. That's, that's sick. Um, that will help with groceries and whatever else. And cheers for that. You guys are awesome. And uh, I'll get that checkout tour Monday. And anything anybody have to add? Angel come. When are we doing the first angel come? Exactly. Like. <laughs> right after this, right after the, right, right when we st step back into the green room, I think. Is when we're yeah, yeah, jam, yeah. Jam it we'll out. Start working, we'll start working out lyrical concepts. <laughs> look, look, look for the demo to drop on Bandcamp. Uh, it's going to be really deep. Okay. Well, it needs, it, it needs to be hard. It needs to be hard for there to be any sort of success in this. Uh, anyway, that's a lame joke. Anyway, cheers, everybody. <laughs> you guys are great. And Eric, Simon, Awesome as always. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you all next week, as Thank always, you. on the Heavy Metallurgy. Cheers. Heavy Metallurgy. Cheers. Cheers, all.